Well, Dragon's Dogma 2 is practically here, and the debate about 30 FPS is alive and well. Next-gen console owners are once again being told that their console just isn't strong enough for 60 FPS games, despite the overwhelming majority of games launching this generation having 60 FPS modes, all while PC users are reporting serious CPU bottlenecking in Dragon's Dogma 2, and very strong PCs are seemingly required to get consistent performance out of this game and even those computers are having some dips and they need to do some tweaking now because of this some are even saying that the 30 fps games you know that's a trend that's going to continue to grow others just simply refuse to buy a game that can't deliver a 60 fps experience or a 60 fps option so the question is does 30 fps as a game do 30 fps games have a future in the gaming world and why is 30 fps a problem for other games when they get reviewed and it's considered a problem and it's criticized but it seemingly is not hurting the review scores of dragon's dogma 2 now i put all of the good information right here at the beginning of the video uh it's sort of uh, an opening monologue and it is setting the stage for the discussion with the live audience so if you want to be here for those discussions make sure you hit subscribe and the bell button that way you don't miss out on live shows uh hit the like button as well that helps out the channel and if you want to support the channel directly there's a bunch of links below as well as the join button the release of Dragon's Dogma 2 has reignited the long-standing gamer debate about 30 FPS. Many next-gen console owners feel that 30 FPS should have been left behind, or at least simply an option, like if I want to choose between quality and performance mode. Some feel that it just doesn't matter. If the game is good, 30 FPS is tolerable. Well, Dragon's Dogma 2 is running at an uncapped 30 FPS on the PS5 and the Series X, which is probably the weirdest thing I have seen in a while uncapped 30 frames per second uh even john lineman from digital foundry he expressed expressed worry about this whenever the first initial previews were out there ign had their video and he commented he said the frame rate is basically 30 fps with poor frame pacing so it'll look much worse so this is because it isn't capped at 30 uncapped 30 is just an incredibly bizarre choice so that's another aspect of why you might be hearing people sort of being critical of the performance of the game on console so first i want to walk through what exactly happened we're hearing different things the pc crowds you know expressing different things about performance but there's also some quick glances at the reviews it seems to indicate that this isn't having much of an effect on the game's overall score now we will wait and see what the steam user score and the console user score lands on because because if this game is performing rather poorly on most rigs, unless you're an incredibly strong PC owner, then it might actually hurt the game's user score. It would not be the first time that the users disagree with the review outlets because of performance issues. Uh, Jedi Survivor, if anybody remembers that, that game still is terrible on Steam, and the developers should be embarrassed with the fact that they basically abandoned the game. So secondly, I will tell you what I think with respect to the future of 30 FPS games. I'm going to address the notion that there is sort of a 30 FPS game trend returning, like that we're headed back I am going to address that because I think that is just a ludicrous claim that's not founded in anything. So first, what exactly happened? Well, when Dragon's Dogma 2 preview started rolling out, it became clear that the 30 FPS rumors were true. There was only one outlet that was claiming that the game was running at an uncapped 60 when they played the demo, and that was the only outlet reporting it. Nobody else chimed in. Nobody said, "Oh yeah, you know, it's uh, it's it's running at 60. We were there. We you know, nobody would corroborate those claims. It was just one outlet. There were even videos out there claiming to debunk the 30 FPS rumors about Dragon's Dogma 2. Then an interview surfaced where it was confirmed that it would, it would be uncapped. 30 fps on console which again is the weirdest thing i've ever heard why would you not cap this game at 30 fps so fast forward to when reviews started dropping performance was mentioned but seemingly it did not hurt the scores all that much one pc reviewer however did remark on twitter and said the following i mentioned in the review but it's worth iterating that dragon's dogma 2 is incredibly cpu intensive my ryzen 7 64 gig ddr5 and rtx 49 90 desktop had dips to 50 fps 
in Vernworth all CPU bottlenecks. So essentially they're saying when you get into certain areas, it dips, like populated areas, towns like that. And then they went on to say that their laptop, their gaming laptop, was pretty good at 1440-30 with high settings. And they said this, they said, the game is very demanding and don't expect to be playing at 60 FPS with a machine any older than a year or so. So needless to say, this game is demanding. This guy is saying, listen, if you have a rig that's older than a couple of years or older than a year, you're struggling. You're going to struggle to hit 60 FPS. So some would argue that that means the game is poorly optimized and they're throwing too much at the CPU or it's it's bottlenecking at the CPU, essentially. Now, Rock Paper Shotgun did a review and they stated the following. They said, Dragon's Dogma 2 suffers a performance collapse every time you go near a settlement, likely doesn't make the most of your hardware and allows only small frame rate improvements by dropping the quality settings. So even if you think like, oh, I'll go in, I'll tweak it, I'll tune things down, I'll turn things down. I'll get good performance. That's not working according to more than just this review. I'm seeing a lot of people saying like they just can't squeeze much out of the game even when they lower settings. Now, some are pointing to the engine and they're saying, well, it's the engine that's the cause of this. And listen, to be clear, the game is receiving extremely high praise. I'm not talking about the actual game itself. We're talking about performance. We're talking about the the way that the game has been optimized. Comparisons to Elden Ring and exploring that world are being made by some reviewers. Some are claiming this is their game of the year already. And for a lot of us, this just merely adds to the frustration. It's sort of like when I had to stop playing The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. I just couldn't deal with the frames per second being so low. It even fell below 30 frames at certain times if it was raining or something. And I knew that I was playing a fantastic game I knew that that game would be nominated for game of the year and it was likely a front runner, but I just couldn't tolerate the 30 FPS. So hearing all of the praise for Dragon's Dogma 2, it's like it almost makes it worse that they were not able to optimize this thing any better. Currently on Metacritic, it has an 87 for PS5, a 90 for PC, and an 88 for Xbox. Now, that was last night when I wrote this monologue. It may have moved a little bit, but with the number of reviews that were coming in, I don't think those scores are going to move much. Now, a quick skimming of the reviews. You see a lot of 100s, okay? Perfect scores. You see a lot of 90s. But as you scroll and you start reading the scores that are in the low 80s, you see some themes cropping up, saying that the game feels outdated, like it feels too similar to the original. And it's somewhat evenly split between the high praise and the more nuanced reviews. There were, when I checked, there were 24 reviews that were at a 90 or higher on Metacritic. There were 23 reviews that were in the 80s and down. So if you kind of separate those two groups, in my mind, the 90s and up are just like roaring praise. The 80s and down were more nuanced. A lot of the reviews in the 80s and down mentioned technical issues, clunkiness, or the game feeling outdated. While the reviews in the 90s and up, they just sort of see this game as a must play. And I'm going to be honest with you, this seems to mirror the debate about 30 FPS. There's the side that just doesn't care. They have probably played more next-gen games on quality mode. A lot of people just boot up games, they leave it on quality mode. 30 FPS doesn't bother them. But then there are those who want a 60 FPS game. They're going to be more likely to describe the game as clunky, as having technical issues. Oh, it feels outdated. Well, yeah, 30 FPS certainly does feel outdated to anybody who's been gaming the last four years on next-gen consoles where the vast majority of games are hitting 60 FPS. So you have to decide which type of player you are because it sounds like a fantastic game. It looks like a fantastic game, right? But if you're like me, I I just think you're probably not going to be able to do it. You're just not going to be able to push through and deal with the issues and deal with the problems, or or I'm sorry, the performance issues. Now, I had to agree with Donnie on Twitter from Pure Dead Gaming. He said that handing a game a 10 out of 10 while admitting that the performance is very rough, he said that that's BS. And I could not agree more. I, I said the same thing when Jedi Survivor got roaring scores. It got like 10s out of 10s, 9s out of 10s, and it had glaring performance issues to give a game that has performance issues a perfect score 
I feel that is a misrepresentation of the product. I consider that to be dishonest. It's like you're not actually telling the consumer how the game is. You're just sort of, oh, this is such a good game, and then you're overlooking something that will hinder the average experience of anybody who's playing the game. I know Capcom is a media darling lately, and I know that Dragon's Dogma 2 is a highly anticipated game, but... That doesn't mean you just overlook performance issues and hand a game a 10 or a 100. Review outlets are trusted, and consumers are going to see 100s, they're going to see 10 out of 10 scores, they're going to be blindsided when they play a game that just doesn't run that well. Now, I know for a fact that happened with Jedi Survivor. Many people bought it on the roaring praise of review outlets, and, you know, people basically saying, like, oh, this is one of the greatest games ever, and then it had tons of issues, and They felt like they sort of got tricked. That leads me to telling you what I think about all of this, okay? First, I want to speak to where games are headed, all right? The last four years have made it very clear that games are not regressing at all. I've refused to accept this false notion, okay? New tech is being developed. Upscaling technology is improving. And a PS5 Pro is on the way that aims at targeting even better performance than we're currently getting. The notion that games are headed backwards has no basis. I believe it is commonly a narrative driven by people who are trying to defend or hand wave a 30 FPS game. They're either defending the fact that Xbox did it or they're defending Dragon's Dogma or they'll make up things like the consoles just aren't strong enough, right? They'll ignore the monsoon of 60 FPS games that we got this generation. Someone on Twitter even did the math. Less than 10 games out of over 3,000 are are at the 30 FPS cap and then the rest have a 60 FPS option or just run at 60 FPS. Now does that sound Sound like a trend? Less than 0.1% versus 99.9% of games? That's not a trend at all. This is completely fabricated. It's made up. If your favorite developer or platform delivered a 30 FPS game, you don't have to defend it. You don't have to pretend like it's a trend or that, well, these consoles just aren't strong enough. It's undeniably clear that the vast majority of developers are having no problem delivering 60 FPS games this generation, which means we have no reason to think that games will regress. Beyond that, player expectations have changed. Fortnite has been 60 FPS for a long time, and they even got their game to hit 60 FPS on old gen consoles. GTA 5 was recently updated to hit 60 FPS. The latest Call of Duty games are 60 with the 120 FPS modes as an option. Do you actually think the number of people that have played Fortnite, GTA 5, and Call of Duty, do you think that massive number of players are going to accept 30 FPS games in the future? I certainly don't. Now, there is talk that GTA 6 will be 30 FPS even on the PS5 Pro. Now, personally, I think much of the dialogue around the PS5 Pro is going to end up a lot like the dialogue that said the Series S would be stronger than the PS5. All those receipt polls were beautiful because people are getting ahead of themselves. They're talking about things that we know virtually nothing about speculation leading to hard conclusions is rather foolish. I would find it to be very strange that Rockstar spent a bunch of time updating GTA 5 to 60 FPS only to have people buy their sequel and then lose that performance. It I will concede though, GTA 6 is just so big that people would overlook it. Now I won't. I'm not going to overlook 30 FPS anymore. Are you kidding me? We're well beyond that this should be even accepted. So even if GTA 6 is 30 FPS, given the statistics currently of how many more 60 FPS games there are, it has to be said Outliers don't set trends. You cannot claim a trend of 30 FPS is happening when all of your examples will be outliers. They won't be in the majority. So the point that I'm really trying to make is what I put on the thumbnail. 30 FPS games, they have no future, okay? Now that doesn't mean that 30 FPS games can't be commercially successful. Dragon's Dogma 2 will likely do very well, and GTA 6 isn't really going to be slowed down 
down by anything, but I don't think there is a future where 30 FPS games are the norm. They certainly already are being, I think, seeing less and less acceptance. Gotham Knights tried to hide the fact that their game was 30 FPS. They tried to hide it from the public. They literally timed somebody out in their Discord for asking if the game had 60 FPS as a mode. Now, that means they were on standing orders to keep that quiet. Somebody instantly responded to the question and timed the person out. That means they were instructed to keep it from the public. They didn't want the public to know. Redfall not being at 30 uh, at 60 FPS, you know, was apologized for the fact that it launched without a 60 FPS mode. The infamous sticker that had to be put on the back of the game. Starfield didn't even include it in their Starfield Direct, even though we were told that they would answer that question in the Starfield Direct. They answered it in an interview after the fact, which is something that I always point out to people who say, well, 30 FPS is no big deal. There really isn't a difference. Well, if that's the case, then why not make it front and center in the marketing? Right? We went from consoles promising a standard output of 60 FPS and up to 120 FPS to devs trying to keep their performance a secret. If 30 FPS is totally fine, well, why not be upfront about it? Why don't you include it in the marketing? Why do you wait until the last possible moment to tell people? Well, we all know why. Because it isn't acceptable and it doesn't have a future in the gaming space we're dealing with old engines or creative decisions or poorly optimized games i was heavily critical of final fantasy 16 for this very reason we were told that it was going to show off the power of the ps5 and it looks like garbage when you're not in combat because it's a stuttering mess it doesn't even keep a consistent frame rate going into the 30s and 40s not even staying close to 60 and then when you're in combat it's a lock 60 that's a creative decision that the developers made if your game launches and is capped at 30 fps and requires a top of the line pc to maintain 60 fps or above that's a poorly optimized game Just yesterday, Alex from Digital Foundry was talking about the Horizon Forbidden West PC port and about how great it was to have a game that could run well on low-end hardware. He was testing the game out on lower-end hardware and was thrilled with the results. Why? Because it's a well-optimized game. That's something that was worked on. Creative vision and great gameplay and good systems, well, they're deserving of praise, right? It sounds like there's amazing things and good experiences to be had in Dragon's Dogma 2. But who cares if you deliver it in a poorly optimized package? I wouldn't have been able to enjoy Elden Ring at 30 FPS, and it was a masterpiece. And the, those who will say, we'll just buy a PC, dude, well, that's a pretty terrible way to treat your customer base. Well, we didn't optimize our game very well, so here's subpar performance on next-gen consoles compared to thousands of other games that have come out that managed to hit 60 FPS. Oh, and you're going to need a really high-end PC to maintain good performance in our game. Well, that's a great way to shrink your market reach. And with how many games are launching this year, 2024 is so full, and my backlog's enormous, you can keep your 30 FPS game. I got plenty of other games to play. So stop making... 30 FPS games. Prioritize performance and optimization so people don't have to literally upgrade their PC just to enjoy your video game. I say this 30 FPS games have no future, and I have no future plans to buy them. But that's just my take. What's your take? So let me give you my closing thoughts and conclusions here to transition to talking to the audience, uh, the, the, the live audience. Listen, I've noticed something recently about the 30 FPS debate. Those who are okay with and defend 30 FPS, they're shrinking in numbers. When I first started playing games specifically on PC, this was last gen, the last gen consoles couldn't give me 60 FPS in Destiny or in Fortnite. And eventually they updated Fortnite to do 60 FPS, but initially it didn't. And usually when that conversation came up, it was a very split room, okay? Half the people would be like, I don't really care, 30 FPS is fine. And the other half would be like, oh my gosh, it's terrible. Okay, more and more people though are simply saying, no thank you, when it comes to 30 FPS games. This is evidenced by the fact that devs and companies avoid the topic or they keep quiet until the very last minute. 
we went for months with rumors and speculation about Dragon's Dogma being locked at 30 FPS, and they just wouldn't answer the question. They finally did an interview, like, what, two weeks before the game comes out? I, I'm just going to say it. That's scummy. The fact that these companies just won't be up front and say, this is the performance of our game. We believe it's still a good game. If you believed in your product and you think you did a good job with the optimization, then just frickin' tell the public what's going on. Keeping it a secret is a sign of dishonesty, which doesn't make me want to buy your game even more than the 30 FPS performance. I don't want to support developers that don't just tell the public what's going on. Second thing I want to say is, just this morning, Rise of the Ronin, the reviews, not that good, not that hot. Why? Well, I'm not surprised. The game looked rough from the beginning, and I got a bunch of hate for saying so. The performance and the graphics are two of the main things showing up in the critical reviews. Now, I'm sure there's going to be comparisons made by hardcore Sony fans who feel that, well, Rise of the Ronin is being judged more harshly than Dragon's Dogma 2, okay? Listen, I'm going to play Rise of the Ronin tomorrow. I'll let you know if the scores are deserved, because... From what I've seen and from the gameplay analysis that I've done, the, the scores for Rise of the Ronin don't surprise me. As far as I can tell, Dragon's Dogma 2 is a great game mired in poor optimization. Ronin is being criticized for far more than just performance and graphics. My conclusion is this. 30 FPS games have no future because a consistent theme is that 30 FPS capped games on console or games that perform poorly on console, they don't do very well on PC either. Jedi Survivor, Redfall, Gotham Knights, Starfield all have bad scores on Steam. The consumer reception was negative. Good. It's deserved. The only 30 FPS console game this generation that did well on PC in my in my quick research that I did was Plague Tale Requiem. It got a 60 FPS update later and it has a high praise score on Steam because it's a good game. It just didn't have 60 FPS at launch. So it's clear that developers know 30 FPS is not a smart play. It's something that they either try to rectify. They added 60 FPS to Redfall. They added 60 FPS to Playtale Requiem. They either try to rectify it or they try to keep it quiet. That sort of proves my point. 30 FPS games have no future. But those are just my thoughts. Now it's time to hear your thoughts. So good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. I could not tell, was is my capture card doing a really bad job? Or is this just, or, yeah, I feel like my capture card's acting really, really funny. Um, I'm not quite sure what it is. Let me go full screen here and see if it's doing the same thing. It's like really, really hitching. I was looking up during during like my monologue and I was like, yeah, that does not look good at all. I'm curious as to what's causing that. Um, oh, I think I know what it is. It's the fact I have it on device default instead of custom. It's going to take a second. Hang on. And then we're going to have to switch it uh, to 1440. Okay. There we go. I was like, oh my gosh. I was like, what is happening? Which, you know, I guess it was fitting for the, uh, <laughs> it was fitting for the topic, um, that, you know, the game perform the game's performance isn't that great. Okay. That's so much better. <laughs> that's so much better. I was like, what the heck is happening? Um, what is, what is going on with this, uh, with this, with this capture? Okay. I was like, oh, wow. I looked up a couple of times and I was like, um, is, is 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 my computer gonna burn up or something? Um, let me go back to uh, let me go back to this version, and oh, that's why my crop was wrong. I wondered why my cropping was wrong. I switched capture cards the other day for gameplay. Problem solved. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, guys. Thanks so much for being here. Go through your morning ritual. There's a ton of you here. Smash that like button. Let's get ourselves to 200 likes. You guys are crushing it already. A ton of gifted members already pouring in. Hot shot first, and so did you. Lotus Esprit with a single gifted, and then two fives. That's 11 just from Lotus, and a $2 super chat tip, and a five from Darius ward and a single from joker quinn that is 17 members already starting off the day and we are well on our way 
Thank you guys so, so much. We are trying to get to 2,500 members before Friday. Let me give you guys a membership update. I appreciate you guys tuning in and supporting the channel uh, with memberships, with likes. Uh, th- this really is the way that we're able to do this. I do this full time. And we are cur- Oh, wow. We we must have had a big day a, a month ago. We are, we are at 2,200. 22- 43. This is why I tell folks, I'm like, you got to push on certain days. So we are about 250 members shy of the goal. We were much closer yesterday, but we must have had a big day 30 days ago. So you guys are going to have to bring the heat today to get back close to the uh, the goal. Time to re-record the monologue, I guess. It's fine. It's fine. It's not that big of a deal. We were raised on 20 frames and now we need 60 or it's a no-go. Console gamers used to just enjoy games i think what you're saying is ridiculous would you would you watch a a brand new television show if it was black and white and low film quality and black bars on the side and it didn't even fill your television screen wouldn't you say why does it look like this you'd be like this looks like old because your standards have changed kardok ren comes in with a 10 bomb and takes us to 27 already on the day says come on boys let's get it and another one comes in from patrick q that's it that's what's gonna take get a little 10 bomb member train going if anybody wants to match kardok ren i owe you guys five we're gonna get back up on the horse very very quickly the idea that people aren't allowed to have their standards raised like, did I buy a really, really nice, you know, uh, monitor and PC or, you know, people sent me an amazing, you know, television, right? Because I don't, I wasn't going to spend the money on myself. I'd rather spend it on the kids. So you guys send me an amazing Father's Day present. Dude, I got this amazing television in my entertainment room and I'm supposed to deal with old performance simply because I grew up on it. That doesn't even make any sense at all. That, that argument is ridiculous. No, yeah, no, that's totally fine. Yeah, I mean, I, I've got an amazing television with an amazing refresh rate, but that's okay. Give me a stuttery flipbook like experience when 99% of the games coming out are at 60 FPS and your game is capped at 30. Dude, miss me with that. Seriously, that's that's the that's the gross minority in the gaming world. You're not even a part of the landscape at that point. Last gen was 1080-30. How is this gen supposed to be 4K-60? There's a gap. Now you're creating an argument that nobody's saying. And there is no gap. We were promised 60 frames per second. We were promised higher resolution. And we've gotten that from most of the developers. Most. So I'm not sure what you're what you're talking about. I've Every single PlayStation Studio game... Every single game, with the exception of what, like Redfall that I've purchased this year, I've gotten 60 FPS. So, the real question you should be asking is, what's Capcom's problem? That's the question you should be asking. And a single comes in from D-Dizzle. Thank you so much, D-Dizzle. And eight months from Edward Hulse. I finally got a job recently. Excited for the future game show spring showcase tonight. Also, I agree that 30 FPS is unacceptable in future games. Thank you very much. And Josh McGill with 15 months says, I always go for 60 FPS for games, but I didn't notice the 30 FPS in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. When I started the game, I was enjoying it. 60 FPS option required. Most games have been cross-gen. Well, okay, what's that have to do with the fact that they're tapping into the power of the new consoles? Spider-Man 2 pulled it off. What do you, what, what what does he what does that how does that even support your argument that games have been cross-gen? Murph Dog with 30 months, welcome back. Wait, who bought you a monitor? Murph! Murph, you did. It's open world, not linear. Of course it's extremely taxing. Okay. Okay, Spider-Man 2 is open world, 60 FPS. I don't, I don't see anything graphically in Dragon's Dogma that's blowing me away. Elden Ring was open world. It was 60 FPS. Now, they had some frame stutters and frame timing issues that they largely fixed, but I've played, I've played plenty of open world games. Horizon Forbidden West is open world. Their uh, Burning Shores DLC is only available on next gen. It's open world and it runs amazing. It looks beautiful. The, the, the question you're, you're, you're attacking this from this really, really weird angle of like 30 FPS is okay because I'm going to somehow come up with creative, logical backflips to explain away 99.9% of the games that are available right now on a next gen console. You can play 60 FPS. 
Did you see 4 Gaming review? I'm not sure. No, I have not. What's good, Javier Cotto? To put a counterpoint, though, like you mentioned before, people don't mind the 30 FPS or 60 FPS. They just want to play the games. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think it's a changing mentality within the gaming world. I do, it, listen, if 30 FPS is totally fine, then why do they try to keep it a secret? Why don't they just put it in the press, in the press releases? Why don't you just put it in the trailers? What's the big deal? If 30 FPS is no big deal and people don't really, really care, then who, then just put it in there. Put it in your trailers. Why did Gotham Knights try to hide it from the public? Why? Why do they wait until the last minute to say anything about it? Why do you think? If it's no big deal, if it's like, oh yeah, customers don't really care about 30 FPS. Okay, sure, put that in your freaking trailer then. Do it. Do it. I think your analogy is terrible. While I understand that black and white and color would definitely set a new standard, but to act like 30 FPS and 60 FPS is this massive quality jump is ridiculous. It's not ridiculous. It's facts. It's literally double the performance. It adds a smoother experience. It allows the fidelity of the graphics and the high resolution textures to not look blurry. Like it, it quite literally is a huge jump. It's double. Have you ever looked at the side-by-side comparisons of 30 to 60? It's like going from black and white to color. It's that big of a difference. And obviously I'm being hyperbolic, but I'm being hyperbolic to drive a point. If you buy new equipment because you want new performance and then you don't get it, you're not some spoiled entitled baby because, well, back in my day, we only had 16-bit games. Like, what the frick? I grew up in the 80s i'm i'm 42 like i grew up in that era that doesn't mean i want to go back to it do you think i want to go back to crt monitors and and games that like look like bland you remember when they would put faces on the on the on like the polygon heads we're like oh look how good that looks come on dude we know why would we want to go back to that you think there'll be a 60 FPS patch eventually? I have no idea. This this game is, as far as I can tell, this game is not is not well optimized. I'm a man. I'm 40. Like this this game is not well optimized. There's a guy there that that guy on Twitter was like, if your PC's older than about a year, you're you're not gonna you're not gonna get 60 FPS out of this game. Your main character looks like a game, like it came straight out of the PS3 360 uh, gen in Dragon's Dogma 2. I don't see any graphics in Dragon's Dogma 2 that warrants it not being at 60. It doesn't look that great. It looks nice. I think it looks nice, but it doesn't look, it's not like mind-blowing. 42, old man. Oh, wait, I'm the same age. If old performance is okay because we grew up on it, then what's the point of new hardware? Th- that's what I'm saying, human type person. That that logic never never lands with me. Lono, we thought those golden eye faces were awesome. How dare you poop on that memory? I'm not saying that it's a bad memory. I'm saying I don't want to go back there. I don't want to go back there. <laughs> I I have fun memories in high school. I don't want to go back there. Good night. No, thank you. I have no desire to go back there. I'm telling you right now, 30 FPS games have no future. People are rejecting it. The consumers are saying no. And do you want to know why? There are too many mainstream games delivering 60. There's too many. Fortnite got itself to 60 FPS on the previous generation's hardware. Call of Duty's got 60 and 120 modes. GTA 5 updated itself to 60. Do you honestly think that many people aren't going to boot up and play 30 and be like, oh, what's wrong with this game? Do you want to know why? You're going to read reviews of Rise of the Ronin and you're going to read reviews of Dragon's Dogma 2 from the average user and they're going to say, it feels clunky. It looks and feels outdated. Do you want to know why they're doing that? Do you want to know why they're saying that? Because they've been playing games at 60 and they can't tell you the problem but they're going to tell you in their own way and in their own words. They're going to be like, oh, oh, what's the matter with this game? Why does it look like that? That's why they use words like clunky and outdated. 
because they cannot explain to you what the real issue is. But I'm telling you, when you get accustomed to 60 and you go down to 30, it's jarring. Phantom Liberty's even 60. Well, yeah, I mean, that's another that's another beautiful open world game that I can play at 60. Gorgeous open world game. I can play it at 60. Fighting Cowboy said it's a modern masterpiece. Well, and I said this in my show open. I said, it sounds like a great game mired in poor optimization. Like, you can make the a most amazing game ever. But if it's poorly optimized, is that real, does it matter? Like, if I would have had to play Elden Ring at 30 FPS, I wouldn't have been able to do it. I couldn't get through Tears of the Kingdom. I was like, I can't do it, man. I just can't. I, I play... I've been playing too many 60 FPS games. I would like help my son with Kane and Bridge of Spirits, and then I'd go back to Zelda, and I'd be like, "Huh?" And I'm like, "Oh my gosh!" It like hurts your eyes. It's like, "Ugh." Behemoth says, "I hate it. It hinders me from pre-ordering the game." Fighting Cowboy also said it can barely run above 70 FPS on his $5,000 PC. That's ridiculous. Chat summary. That summary from the AI. People are discussing the frame rate of the game. Some people are saying that they can't go back to 30 FPS, while others are saying that they don't care about the frame rate as long as the game is good. (laughs) That's great. That 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 that's actually the chat AI is actually pretty smart. Elsewhere broadcast says some time ago Capcom made a decision to use the RE engine for all future games. Probably it was a mistake for Open World Dragons Dogma. Other games on RE hit 60 no problem. Devil May uh, Cry uh, 5 hits 120. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I made a mistake and I took it out of my monologue. I almost said this. Rise of the Ronin was the interview where the guy said, we knew this was going to be a challenge because of the, basically, I guess the engine, like going to open world was going to be a challenge and we're seeing performance criticism of Rise of the Ronin. So that doesn't surprise me at all that because we know the RE engine is a good engine. I've praised that engine recently. It seems really, really well built for multi-plat releases. Capcom has been the most consistent lately of like, here's a great game and it runs great everywhere, but it's pretty clear that the engine has its limitations. I think the best engine in the market right now, at least one of the best engines in the market, is the Decima engine. I think that engine is proving itself to be worthy of pretty much anything that you want to throw at it. You want to go realistic? You want to go big open world? You want you want people to look like they're real people? Use the Decima engine. Now, the Unreal Engine, you know, is 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 getting some footing as well. That that Captain America game looks f- unbelievable. It looks so so good. But again, Unreal's got some rough spots. I think the RE engine likely is the culprit here. They went they went with this huge open world, and maybe they just don't have the optimization chops for environments that are that large and it created a CPU bottleneck because that's what everybody keeps saying they're like it's a CPU bottleneck it's so CPU intensive like it just doesn't matter you're like oh I turned this down I turned textures down I turned doesn't matter it's just bottlenecking at the CPU so you can you can lighten the load on the GPU all you want it's still going to give you a lot of these issues from what I read I'm not a, I'm not a tech savvy guy I'm just relaying to you what I have read and what I have heard uh, Darius with a five spot. It's sad because even a game like Need for Speed Unbound runs 4K60 on all platforms, but a game like Dragon's Dogma 2 can't. <clears throat> Decima Engine is what runs Horizon. Yeah, the Decima Engine is Horizon and Death Stranding, and what they were able to do with Death Stranding and the Decima Engine and DLSS, I'm telling you, I think the Decima Engine is going to grow in popularity over the next 10 years. I think more people are going to try to use it. I don't know who they have to go through to use it. Um, I don't know who owns the rights or sells the licensure, but if games that haven't been optimized at all continue to sell well at whatever the hell uncapped 30 FPS is, we'll continue to see some games doing it. Um, I don't know if I agree with that, Derek, because I do think Gran Turismo 6, um, okay, good, 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 good. Sorry, we're getting updates about a family. Um, it's, we're we're all crossing our fingers on something. Uh, Dark Taco with a $5 super chat tip. 
Lono, I agree that folks might be turning on 30 FPS, but we are still the minority. Think about how many people played Elden Ring at 30 on the PS4. Uh, love it, bro. Well, but when you're on the old, when you're when you're on the old gen, you're you're gonna be okay with old gen performance. You, th- th- these are people that have purchased Xbox Series Xs and PlayStation Fives that are like, yo, what the frick is this? Now, what Derek was saying. Sure, when you're Dragon's Dogma 2 and when you're Grand Turis- I'm sorry, when you're uh, Grand Theft Auto 6, sure, you can probably survive and still have massive commercial success. Everybody else clearly knows that you better keep it a secret. It hurt Gotham Knights PR, it hurt Redfall, it hurt Starfield. Don't pretend it didn't hurt those games. The public perception, the articles, the videos, the- I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it will hurt you. There's more PS4s and PS5s. Okay. Though. What's that? What's that have to do with it? So, oh, I get what you're probably saying. You're probably saying that the commercial success of the game will be padded by the fact that the average person's going to be buying drag. A lot of people are going to buy Dragon's Dogma, you know, or games like it and play it on the PS4. I don't think, can you get Dragon's Dogma on the PS4? Did, did they hit that many platforms? I don't actually know. I don't think, can you get it for the PS4? Did they go, did they go multi-multi-plat? Or is it just PS5 only? I feel like this thing's next-gen only. I don't know if you can get it on um, all those platforms. So that won't matter. <laughs> you, but you see what I'm saying? You keep making points that, that, that aren't relevant. Games are leaving behind the PS4, so who cares? Yeah, it, 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 You can't even buy Dragon's Dogma on the PS4, so what's it matter? GTA 6. GTA 6 isn't going to be on the PS4. It, th- these games are leaving behind the old gen so if they're next gen only then the next gen consumer is going to say what's going on with this game's performance if you buy a PS5 and you played Returnal, Demon's Souls Remake Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, God of War Ragnarok, Horizon Forbidden West Gran Turismo 7 Spider-Man 2 and then let's say you play a third party game that also runs at 60 FPS like Call of Duty had a 120 FPS mode. Maybe you play a little bit of Fortnite. Maybe you play some Apex Legends. Right? Maybe you play GTA 5. That's a lot of games and a lot of experiences at 60 FPS. To be like, no, yeah, this is fine. I'll go back in time. You know, I bought this box. I played hundreds of hours of all these games at 60. That's fine. Yeah, I'll go back in time. That's cool. No. I hope more and more consumers just say, oh, 30 FPS? No, thank you. I think that should be in the, in, in the storefront. I think it should be in the storefront. I think when you go to buy a game, it should say that. It should be like, it should have the performance the performance options right there so you know. You're like, oh, this is a 30 FPS game. I don't want it. Consumers should know what they're buying. They shouldn't find out after the fact. Lotus Esprit with another gifted member and takes us to 29 members on the day we have slipped a little bit toward that goal we were really close to it we need about 200 members to get there i don't like 30 either but it's not unplayable that that that's but that's your perspective my perspective is that it is unplayable i tried to do it with tears of the kingdom and i couldn't do it xbox does that Well, props to them. That should be in the storefront. It should be right there, front and center. I should be able to know what kind of performance I'm going to get in this game. The thing about those games is that there are many different problems with those games as well. 30 FPS was just the icing on top for games like Starfield, Redfall, ETC. Hang on, though, ETP. I, I, I wasn't making that an equivalency. I wasn't saying those games did poorly because of 30. I was saying it hurt those games. Like, before the games came out, it hurt them. It, it, nobody had even touched the game yet. And a five bomb comes in from Joker Quinn and takes us to 34. He's like, come on, boys. I believe we can get there.
I, I was saying that it hurt those games. It became this huge thing of like, oh, wow. this Yeah, these games are a 30. These games are a 30. And the same nonsense narrative, people tried it back then. They were like, oh, these consoles just aren't strong enough. Really? There's like less than 10 games that have been capped at 30 FPS this gen. What are you talking about? The overwhelming majority has been offering 60 FPS. If it's next gen only, why would you think games should perform better? Since now it is time when games try to push the hardware to its limits, it makes no sense. No, what makes no sense is a game coming out and being capped at 30 when the vast majority of games aren't doing that. That's what makes no sense. Make sense of that for me. Like, I've got a ton of of, of next gen games and next gen experiences. All give me 60. I don't understand. They're the ones breaking from rank. They're the ones that are the outliers. Why are you acting like it's excusable? That doesn't make any sense to me at all. Yo, Lotus Esprit gifts another member. It takes us to 35. Thank you so much. I've, I've, I've never met a consumer base that is both simultaneously entitled as heck but also very quick to defend subpar nonsense what doesn't make sense is thinking that games that are 30 fps are pushing anything exactly this game what's this game pushing other than really bad optimization i i don't see anything in dragon's dogma that's pushing graphical fidelity you know realism lighting nothing it's An engine that probably wasn't suited for open world, so it's creating a CPU bottleneck, and we got we got bad performance. Wow, that's not a game pushing anything. They didn't like. It's not like they overindulged in graphical fidelity or lighting. They weren't like, "Oops, sorry guys." Like, I think Gotham Knights could be an example of a game where they were like, "Oh, we really, really think this will be good," and they basically baked ray tracing into the game, and you can't turn it off. And that's basically one of the reasons that it runs so poorly and was capped at 30. Skyler with 10 months says, I picked up Dragon's Dogma 2. I definitely prefer 60 FPS, so it'll be interesting to see if my eyeballs can handle it. A game cannot look good at 30 FPS, says Eugene. Stop accepting it as high fidelity. It's impossible for a video game to look good at 30 FPS anymore. And that's where I, 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 I really agree with what Eugene is saying. When you raise a game's graphical fidelity way, way up, and you're like, well, this is fidelity mode, this is quality mode, and it's running at 30, it doesn't look like it's quality because it looks blurry if I move. Like, how is, how is that pushing anything? Oh, yeah, the lighting and the graphics and the textures in the world, oh, it's pristine. Just don't move. Because if you move, it looks blurry. But then you put it on 60 frames per second and it looks crisp. It looks clear. It doesn't look muddy. All those beautiful textures and the foliage and all the different things don't suddenly turn into this like blurry mess. It's like, I don't understand why people think that, oh, look how beautiful this game is. Yeah, when you stand still, when you go into photo mode, move around. Switch your stream to 30 and see how they like it. I can't do that midstream. The question for GTA 6, says Omar, is do we want something that truly pushes the genre forward or do we want GTA 5.5? I am generally with you on 60 FPS, but I have to see what uh, they are doing first. I mean, there, there's, there's a screenshot of somebody that has worked on that game that says they're, you know, they're confident in the game's performance, so we'll see. If you guys haven't hit the like button yet, do me a favor and hit the like button. If you want to chime in on the conversation, hit the subscribe button. Subscribing is totally free. You can talk in my chat. I'll show up on your homepage, your sub feed. I do a daily talk show like this Monday through Friday. I am safe for work. A lot of people throw me on in the background of their day like a podcast. We also have a variety of ways to support the channel. This is not a sponsor. Reforge Gaming has Reforge Roast. If you're a coffee drinker, check out ReforgeRoast.com. You can also become a member. If you ever decide to become a member on your own instead of hoping for a gifted because we have a very generous community here that gives members all the time. If you ever pick up your own membership, pick the $6 tier, okay? The $5 tier is reserved for gifted those are all of the great ways you can support the channel GTA 6 will not be 60 FPS 
I think people are getting way ahead of themselves. I, you know what I'm saying? I think people are getting way ahead of themselves. I think people are, are, are making very, very strong, conclusive statements about the PS5 Pro, and they said the same thing about the Series S, and they all look stupid now. So I think people need to slow down. I think people are getting so quick to do this, like, dismissal hand wave thing or this oh it's not going to be very good or oh it's not going to be very strong yeah you said this before and you were wrong you said the series s was going to be stronger than the ps5 you said it was going to run circles around the ps5 how'd that work out how how those technological predictions work out did they did those land as accurate Devin Evans with a five dollar super chat tip Lono credit where it's due because you are consistent about 60 FPS people being upset you are demanding better is odd to me but whatever I appreciate that Severin I won't buy GTA 6 unless it's 60 I, I'm with you I'm not I'm not buying 30 FPS games in 2025 are you freaking kidding me I have a backlog a mile long of games that don't just look good but they run well I, I'm not playing 30 FPS game dude I'm not why would I why would I lower my standards and have an experience that that doesn't feel good? Why would I do that? It doesn't make any it doesn't make any sense. I don't care how good your game is. Tears of the Kingdom was nominated for the game of the year. I was loving it. Masterpiece. Stopped playing. Why? I, I, because I can't do it. It doesn't feel good. It feels gr- it feels bad. It's it's blurry. It it's it. I feel like my eyes are straining. I I can't explain it any any other way. It would be like watching a television show, and they suddenly lowered the resolution, but it still filled your entire TV. You'd be like, you're like, it looks blurry, a little blurry all of a sudden. What happened? Like what what happened to all the the crispness? You would know something was wrong. Like you would sense it. That's how it is for me with 30, dude. Have you ever shared your backlog? I mean, what do you mean? Like, I don't have it, like, written down somewhere. I just have games I know I want to go back to. If you as a company want to raise game prices and you want all my money, and at the bare minimum, I expect a well-optimized game. That See, that's what frustrates me in this conversation. Is you're hand-waving and defending a company that did a bad job. They did a bad job. Call it what it is. Instead of acting like it's fine, you're being entitled, it's not that big of a deal, games are going to push the hardware. No, it's a poorly optimized game. What are you doing? What are you doing? Somebody made a really dumb decision and baked ray tracing into Gotham Knights and it ran like dog water and everybody defended it and said, well, it's open world and it's untethered co-op and you're just being, you're just being picky. These consoles just aren't strong enough. Shut up. No. Don't defend companies doing a bad job. Well, what are you doing? Like, a, a poorly optimized game comes out. I remember people did this with Jedi Survivor. Jedi Survivor comes out, runs terribly. Poor, the performance mode was a joke. Screen tearing, frame stuttering, and people are like, I you just, I don't re- you put it on quality mode, it's not that bad. Why are you defending a company doing a bad job? Rise of the Ronin has a bunch of performance issues. You think I'm going to defend that? No. I didn't defend Jedi Survivor. Huge Star Wars fan. I've been heavily critical of that game. Jedi Survivor is still garbage on PC, by the way. Terrible score. They practically abandoned the game as far as I can tell. It looks like the Princess Peach game is also running poor. It's got bad scores. Princess Peach apparently targets 30 FPS and consistently misses that mark. Cutscenes, transformation sequences, loading screens, numerous gameplay sections all suffer from massive drops in frame rate that, while not always impactful on play, are noticeable enough to detract from an otherwise from an otherwise charming visual suite. Wouldn't surprise me at all if uh, that was intended for Switch 2.
you know? Oh, hang on a second. Uh, Severin Evans with two months says, Speaking of retro gaming, when we grew up playing Sonic on Sega Genesis, it was 60 FPS. Then as games went on, it seems like we are regressing there. I see no evidence that we're regressing. Mm -mm. Nope. There are way too many games at 60 FPS to claim that we're regressing. This is why I always laugh at consoles saying they do 60 FPS. They never will if devs get lazy and go back to 30 FPS. Yeah, but there are way more games at 60 than there are at 30. There is not a trend. We are not regressing. Stop saying that because what you're doing is is you're basically making it seem as though what these handful of games are doing is normal or growing. It's not. They are outliers. They are mathematical outliers. They're not setting a trend. They're outside the trend. Get it right. Get it straight. These 30 FPS games are not setting a trend. They're not. There's there's a handful of them. And two of the games that launched at 30 already put out 60 FPS modes. So get out of here with the nonsense. This is like some kind of growing trend. A five spot from Lotus Esprit, Alone in the Dark Thoughts. It looks like it's getting terrible reviews. Skylar with a five spot. Uh, is it worse to have bad performance uh, performance mode or no performance, mo- performance mode at all? I think I'd rather have no performance mode at that point. I mean, you're asking me if you want me, if, if I would prefer to get punched in the face or punched in, in the head. Like, it doesn't matter. It's going to hurt, and I'll probably have a headache afterwards. Like, I don't... It, w- would you rather have a bad performance mode or no performance mode at all? I, I, w- w- can I punch you in the, in the face or in the head? I don't. It's gonna hurt, and I'm gonna get a headache. I don't want. I don't want either. What difference does it make? <laughs> like, what difference does it make? <laughs> Everyone's saying 30 FPS is good for Dragon's Dogma 2. Well, OMG, what an improvement if Capcom releases a performance patch and raises it to 60. Head over face. Well, obviously you would choose one over the other. Yes. Head over face. You know. (laughs) That's a real question, right? Really, that's the measure of a man, you know, with one question. Do you want me to punch you in the face? Or do you want me to punch you in the head? Same, same strength. Yeah, same, same punch. Yeah. The, the guy who says head is vain. He doesn't want him, He doesn't want to look bad. And the guy who says face is arrogant. You know. <laughs> yeah, you know, just psychologically break it down. You know, do you want to get punched in the face or the head? You want crap or do you want crap? You know, yeah. Never trust early access reviews. Never. Dragon's Dogma 2 is scuffed on PCs. This is not a console problem. That's exactly the point that I'm trying to make. Stop defending companies that are doing a bad job. This is not the console's fault. This is not, oh, the consoles just aren't strong enough. No, there was less than 10 games when, uh, what's his name, Nick Nicola did the math on Twitter. He was like, there is such a small number of games that have launched capped at 30. What, 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 no, you're, you're defending a company doing a bad job. Capcom did a bad job. They did. They made a great game and they didn't optimize it well. Don't defend that. They don't need you to defend that. They need to be held accountable and said what why would you sell a game that runs so poorly if i don't have a computer that's you know 10 10 months old or less then i'm probably not going to get great performance what the frick why would you defend that lotus esprit comes in with another gifted and takes us to 36 members on the day we're aiming for 200 members today boys that's a big goal we can do it every 25 i get five i'm helping you get there i already gifted five Charles Freeman with 29 months. My PS5 will never touch 30 FPS game. Once I tasted the nectar of 60 FPS, I can't go back. Good man. 
Rich Rod with the five spot says, Lono, I agree, 60 FPS is it, but do we have proof that people actually prefer it who are casual? People who play on cheap TVs won't change settings. Well, hang on, Rich Rod. I want to thank Severin Evans for his five spot. I don't agree with 30 FPS either. I will say, though, that if people keep supporting them, they will continue doing it since they see the money coming in. I don't think so, Severin. No. Nope. The PR damage that it did to Gotham Knights before it even released. The PR damage that it did to Redfall. They, Phil Spencer apologized about the 60 FPS conundrum with Redfall. Do you honestly think that level of stage, that level of press, that level of reach, that companies are going to be like, no, no, yeah, we want to weather that storm? No way. No. Now, the question Rich Rod posed... I don't think you're incorrect in observing, presuming, or maybe even assuming that a lot of people probably just boot up games and just play at quality mode. They don't know. They don't have a clue. Right? Um, It's one of those things where it's like, I think that line is moving. And I'll tell you why. Sorry, I was reading a comment. It 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 it, it jammed up my uh, my ex my my train of thought. I think the line is moving, and I'll tell you what's moving it. I think Fortnite, I think Call of Duty, and I think GTA Five is moving that needle. Because Call of Duty and Fortnite and GTA Five all have 60 FPS stuff going on. You know, so it's like that to me is one of those things where it's like that's going to change people's expectations their expectations are going to be wow Fortnite and and Call of Duty and GTA they just look so smooth this game doesn't look smooth at all do you see what I'm saying I think the line is moving and it's because widespread super popular games are all running at 60 so they might not be able to tell you Right? They might not be able to tell you. The average consumer isn't going to be able to say, oh, I'm not getting 60 FPS. I'm not getting 60 frames per second. They're going to say, it looks clunky. It looks outdated. It looks old. They'll use phrases like that because they don't know how to tell you that it's 30 FPS versus 60. They're just, they just know it doesn't look good. Did you see the potential that GTA 6 won't hit 60 on the PS5 Pro? How would that be known currently? It's presumptions based on assumptions. It's not good reasoning. It isn't. It it's it isn't. The reasoning is not sound. It is is not sound. They're they're jumping so far ahead of themselves. If GTA 6 is 30, so be it. But there's no way for anybody to know anything definitively right now. People are speaking with definitive language. And they don't know enough to do that. You if you you want to make like, you know, predictions. Sure, go ahead, make your predictions. But I think it's I think it's a presumptions based on assumptions. The assumption being, it's just such bad argumentation. Like as a logician and somebody that gets into debates, I just I look at it. I'm like, what the frick are y'all saying? The assumption being. This has just become the assumption. GTA 6 is going to be 30 FPS. Who the, who the frick established that? Who? But that's being treated like headcanon. That's being treated like gospel. That GTA 6 is going to be 30. It's going to be too big. It's going to be too demanding. These consoles won't be able to do 60. Okay. We know nothing about that game. We know nothing. We know nothing about the engine. We know nothing about the graphical fidelity. We know nothing about the size of the worlds, the rendering methods that they're using. We know nothing. So that's the ground level assumption that started all of this. They're building on that assumption and they're saying, since the PS5 Pro will utilize the same CPU... It will then also run the game at 30. Do you see what they just did? They just baked an unfounded assumption into their argument. This is unfounded. We have no idea if GTA 6 is going to be 30 FPS or not. That just became this weird talking point of like, 
oh yeah it's just gonna be 30 okay so they just bake that in to oh well because of that and because the pro is going to be using the same cpu that yeah it's gonna be 30 as well oh my gosh that's the worst way to construct an argument ever Troll Troll says, hey, Lono, just curious, has anyone made a detailed list of the supposed wave of 30 FPS games yet? No? Uh, okay, carry on then. Yeah, there is no big long list. Digital Foundry supports a potential 30 FPS cap on the Pro, but that's based on if it, that it runs 30 on the base. The CPU is only 10% faster, which means it won't really boost enough, which doesn't interact with the technology in the Pro that we have heard about. Oh my gosh. It hurts, it hurts my head. The, the fact of the... <laughs> The fact of the matter is the, the the way that they're going to be giving you increased performance isn't through the CPU. So the presumption being that, oh, that'll create a CPU bottleneck is unfounded. It's just a presumption. It's an assumption that people are making. It isn't backed by actual evidence. We, we don't have any evidence to this. Now, we have leakers. We have insiders claiming like certain games... And then they say, oh, this is the bump in performance that they got. Well, okay. If the method of getting that bump is through the PSSR technology, upsampling, AI, who the frick knows? If that's how they're doing it, then all this talk of the CPU, that's not how they're getting you there. Do you understand? It's all these presumptions and assumptions. It's like... Now, yes, if you have games like Dragon's Dogma or others that already are CPU intensive, you're probably correct in saying that the pro is going to have a harder time boosting a game like that. Okay, fine. I think that's a fair assessment to make. But again, we don't know. (laughs) Like, why don't we get there? We've been here before. We have been here before. Just enough information for people to say, yeah, the PS5 is going to lag behind. The Xbox Series S is going to run circles around the PS5. And they look like fools who dumped a bucket of egg on their head. They don't have egg on their face. They're swimming in a pool of egg. Like, th- we've been here before. What, th- it's, so, it's such pointless dialogue. We know so little. So these harsh conclusions, it's going to be... 30 or it's gonna be 60 you would no we don't know and it's all coming from the same people who 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 ran with narratives of series s versus the ps5 and they look like absolute buffoons right now so i don't know why we're listening to anybody speak with any sense of authority about what the ps5 pro is going to be able to do with the game it's not even out yet A single gifted from Rissick. Thank you so much, Rissick. Taking us to 37. You want egg on your face or egg on your head? If a game is CPU limited, then all the new tech in the PS5 Pro is not relevant. Those are all graphics boosting techs. Right, and that's fine, Zubair. And if we, listen, if GTA 6 comes out and it's super CPU bound and they can't boost the performance on the Pro and it because it's super CPU bound, it creates bottlenecks in the consoles and it's 30 FPS, fine. But we don't know any of that right now. <laughs> we don't know any of that. We aren't too far apart on this. I'm saying we would need to know the base console performance and we don't yet. AI upscaling can improve many games if they aren't bound by the CPU. But yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm not in disagreement with that. What I'm what I'm not in agreement with is going out and saying like conclusive statements when we know so little. It's just so silly. It's like you guys you guys did this before. The gaming community and the gaming press, y'all did this before. You did this with the Xbox Series S. How'd that work out for you? How? How did it work out? Why is anybody trusting or going on any of this stuff right now? It's like, we, we, we don't know anything. What we do know <laughs> is the Dragon's Dogma 2 is poorly optimized and Rise of the Ronin's getting bad review scores because it feels outdated and clunky and has bad performance. Aren't these... It's just, it's just kind of weird. Aren't these things I, I said? 
I tried to tell folks about Rise of the Ronin. I tried to tell y'all that first trailer. I went to Twitter and I said, Rise of the Ronin looks rough. Something's not right. And I got hate. It looks great. It's going to be great. Looks awesome. You look rough. Okay. (laughs) And the game's out. How's it doing? And then we started hearing about Dragon's Dogma being capped at 30. And I was like, I don't know, man. (laughs) That sounds like a deal breaker to me. No, dude, no. There's no way Dragon's Dogma is going to be 30 FPS. Okay. (laughs) We are disagreeing. We're refining language and statements. We don't know. And if it's X, then Y, it won't matter anyway. Here's what always frustrates me about these situations, Zubair. Let's just imagine that GTA 6 comes out and it's 30 FPS on the PS5 and it's 30 FPS on the PS5 Pro. Nobody knew that based on information. They guessed. When you guess and get it right, I'm not impressed. I'm, I'm not. It's, there's nothing impressive about that. They're guessing right now. And if they get it right, that's what everybody's going to say. Yep, see, see, told you it's going to be 30 FPS. It's like, you didn't know that. You just guessed. You guessed based off of a trailer. A a, a largely cinematic trailer. Get out of (laughs) here. Derek says... The line moves slowly. I think we did 12, uh, 15 to 20 FPS in the Nintendo 64 days until the end of the PS2 era. 30 FPS wasn't standard until the PS3. That's 10 years. The 30 FPS era has lasted nearly twice that long so far. Uh, that's well stated. It, well, it's not. I, w- I would say it's not lasting anymore though, Derek. I think the standard on my PS5 is 60. I get 60 on every game. In their defense, I think they are looking at the graphical fidelity in the trailer and saying similar looking games run at 30 on current hardware. Okay, but it wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> this is not our first day. Why are we acting like it's our first day doing this? You can't you can't base anything off the graphical fidelity of an announcement trailer. We know this. We know. Oh my gosh, we know this. Like, why would we do that? It's a, it's a freaking trailer. Of course it's going to look good. And oh my gosh, Lotus Esprit comes in with a 50 bomb. And chat's going to get pushed all the way out, taking us to 87 members on the day. He's like, we're going to hit that goal if I've got to put the member count on my back. That's a 50 bomb. I'm going to push it again so you can see the Death Star pop out. This man just dropped a bomb on chat. I got to read YouTube Lurker's renewal. 22 months in a VIP says, I find it adorable that a game no one has played runs bad on a console no one has touched. Can we please call this what it is? It's hate for its own sake. I want to be careful, YouTube Lurker. I want to be careful, okay? I owe you guys uh, 10 members, by the way. I'll do that in a moment. I don't think Digital Foundry is dealing in hate. I think they just sort of make off-the-cuff observations. Those guys just like to talk about tech and performance and hardware and they get together and they just kind of shoot the bull you know i like those guys i really do i like richard ledbetter i like alex i think he's very handsome i like john linneman okay no offense to john linneman and richard ledbetter but alex is the eye candy of the show okay i like those guys they seem nice and they get accused of console warring and soaking console war fights, and it's all bogus. They they like tech breakdowns, they like tech comparisons, and people weaponize their work to my console is better than your console. Like that, they, they are not doing anything wrong. What I think ends up happening though is they get sort of clip sniped and used for articles, right? There, people are like, oh, well, Digital Foundry says that GTA 6 is uh, is going to be 30 FPS on the PS5 Pro. And they're like, 
they, they make all these qualifying statements. They're like, based on what we've seen and our assumption that the thing's going to be 30 FPS on the PS5, and if it is CPU intensive, then it will likely then also be 30 FPS on the PS5 Pro. Like, they're so nuanced and careful, and then someone's like, what's wrong with an article? Put it out there, Johnny. Hot off the presses. Digital Foundry says that GTA 6 is going to be capped at 30 FPS on the PS5 Pro. Print it. And that's not really what they said. Lotus Esprit with a 20 bomb! He comes in and says, we're going to go all the way to 107. And he takes us there by himself. I now owe you guys 15 members. Unbelievable. Lotus taking the crown. Taking the crown of the most gifted members today. Like, do you understand what I'm saying? Like, so I'm defending Digital Foundry. Like, I'm not saying, like, oh, they shouldn't have said this. What happens is people take what they say and they're like, oh, yes, we're going to make definitive statements about GTA 6. And it's like, (sighs) we've been here before. Trill says, stop making me look poorer than I already am. (laughs) Shut up. Oh, my gosh. Here's your crown, King. I can't believe we haven't gotten Derek yet. Exactly. I appreciate you delving into. I, you, I, th- I think you ended your sentence a little early, uh, your father. So, what's going on with the early 1900s? I was just being silly. I just doing a character. I just do voices sometimes. Anyways, we, we, we're, we're way off. We're way off in left field. Um, well, not necessarily way off in left field. This is related, the whole R30 FPS games making a comeback, because I largely argued in my show opening monologue that there is no future, right? There is no future for 30 FPS games. Thank you, DK Beggar, taking us to 108 on the day. And then I, I owe you guys 15. Let me do that. Let's see how close we got to the, uh, to the goal. I owe you a 10 and a 5. I'm going to do the 10 right now. So, again, to to state it, and another 5 from Lotus. Holy cow, Lotus, what are you doing? Taking us to 113 members on the day. Let's try and get Derek a badge. Yeah, we got to get Derek back in the funnel here. So to to put it very plainly, to put it very plainly, I don't think that we are headed to a 30 FPS return, even if a really big game like GTA 6 drops and is 30. That is an outlier at that point. That is a game that can get away with it. The rest of the industry is not going to do that. Do you honestly think developers are receiving PS5 Pro dev kits that has technology to let them do 4K60 and 8K30? And do you think they're going to be like, well, I've got an idea, Johnny. Let's go back to 30 FPS. Think about that. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, tech moves forward it doesn't move it doesn't regress it doesn't move back nobody is going to get their hands on the ps5 pro dev kit and say oh I, i've got a great idea i i say we really push the envelope and deliver a 30 fps game yes because that's what you want to do with hardware that's promoting 4k 60 8k 30 that's a that's a brilliant idea A single gifted from Darius Ward. Thank you very much. Taking us to 114. I owe you guys another uh, five bomb, and I'm going to do that now as well. 4K 120. Alex from Digital Foundry, he mocked that, by the way. He mocked that claim. The claim that, like, EA got Jedi Survivor to run at 4K 120. Yeah, he basically called that a clown statement. People are not buying 4K 120 hertz TVs for 30 FPS. That's exactly right. Uh, Omar says, push the graphics even harder seems to be a common developer choice prior to this gen. So I understand the skepticism, especially if they have been on the Xbox this gen. For sure. For sure. Um, 
Thank you, Jazzification, for 21 months in a VIP. Says, don't mind me, Lono Sip. And then Orc Lord with three months of memberships. 30 FPS should have died with the PS5 and the Xbox Series. Don't settle. I agree with you. And a 10 bomb from Lotus Esprit. This man cannot be stopped. I've never seen anything like this. Not since the days of Eknor and Javier Kodo. We've got a new champion in the chat. Lotus Esprit is like, dude... I'm not something. And bro, sexy with the single gifted says, I'll put the cherry on top. There's 125. I owe you guys another five. Every 25, I give five, and I do it right away. I help y'all with the momentum. Huge day for the channel. Lots of new subscribers. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you've never been here before, we'd love to meet you. Say hello in the chat. Make sure you're subscribed so you can talk in the chat. Let's see where all these viewers are coming from. Okay, let's see. Um, You might have seen my video suggested on Dragon's Dogma 2 gameplay. My first proper playthrough. Okay, that we got a lot of clicks from that video. So if you came from there, thank you very much. We are getting some people that are finding us in the search results on YouTube. And then a lot of you, I showed up on your homepage. So thank you so much for being here. I greatly appreciate the massive support. Let's check the member count. Let's see how close we are to the goal with Lotus going insane. Uh, I now, uh, I'm all now paid up. I'm paid up on all the members that I owe you guys. And we are currently sitting on 2350. So he got us out of the 2200s. We're now in the 2300s. So you are now... You're now basically 120 away. I said you needed about 200 today. That's close. Yeah, that's close. Yeah, 100. It's about 120 actually. So it's a little bit. It's a, a little bit more than I than I originally said. Probably because it's always fluctuating. Is Dragon's Dogma capped at 30 on PC? No, it is not. It is not. But you need to have a very very strong PC to get 60. The reviews are coming in and they're basically saying it's incredibly CPU bottlenecked um, and because it's incredibly CPU bottlenecked it is it's the one guy basically said if your computer is older than a year you're probably not going to get 60. That's what he said. Um, so And again, and again, you know, these, these people are PC users. They're, they're, you know, they're, they're, they're out there in the know playing on high end rigs. And they're like, yeah, this is rough. It's not optimized. Well, this is, this is why, this is why I think the conversation gets muddied immediately when people are like, oh, the consoles just aren't strong enough. Oh, if you want 60 FPS, buy a PC. N- what? No, that is not the conclusion that you should be coming to. The conclusion you should be coming to is that it's a poorly optimized game. It's on the developers. Porto says, haven't been here in a while. What's the event for hitting the sub goal this month? If we hit 2,500, we're going to do a big community game night the last Friday of the month. And we'll do it for all members we already did a big community game night for all members. We did a Hell Divers like shoutcasting thing last week. We already did one. So I'll give you another one. But I don't know if we'll do Hell Divers. I'm not sure what we'll do, but we'll do it next week on Friday. And I've been lowering the goal to make it reasonable. Like I basically wake up Monday and I'm like, okay, where are we? And I'm like, okay, let's try and hit this. Instead of being like, look, we got to hit 3,000 and then. We just will never hit it. You know what I'm saying? So I've been making the goals attainable just as a fun way to. It gives us something to do. It supports me. We get a lot of new members. I gift a ton of new members, and then we do like a fun, a fun event to celebrate. I have this and a 4070, and it only hits 65 to 75 at its peak for me. It's not optimized hardly at all. In battle, it drops to 30 to 40 sometimes. See, and that's terrible. Like, I I would never want to play a game like this, and then the minute I get into combat, I'm dropping into the 30s and 40s. For goodness sakes, as critical as I've been to Final Fantasy 16, at least when I'm in combat, it's rock solid. Now, it's annoying when I leave combat or I go to a town. I'm trying to, like, I'm trying to stretch my shoulder in stream now. Oh! Hmm. Oh, it's been getting better. I just have to keep moving it. Um... 
Zybersword says, I am praying it somehow gets optimized to perform better in the near future. Sounds fun. Yeah, we've done Fall Guys Community Game Nights, Fortnite Community Game Nights, Jackbox, and then the most recent thing we've done is you guys make a team in Helldivers, you share screen with me on PlayStation 5, and then my wife and I shout cast your gameplay. Bro, sound like he just popped his shoulder. There's a couple angles that just really hurt, and I hit one of the angles. It's been better. Like, I couldn't I couldn't do this without it being excruciating. Like, I can, like, you know, you gotta, like, scratch your back, and then you push on your elbow to get a little bit of help. I couldn't do this a week ago, so it's better, but... Eugene says, what 30 FPS... <coughs> what 30 FPS game this gen has succeeded? Oh, people would probably say Starfield. I wouldn't say it's a success on Steam. Its score is terrible. I don't think it's sales on Steam. I, there's no there's no way they were satisfied with the sales on Steam. There's no way. And I know whenever you say something like that, you're going to get clipped, and then they're going to put the player count that was celebrated. What What's player count? Is that sales? <laughs> is that sales? <laughs> You can take calcium pills, old man. Leave me alone. I'm only 42. According to... Okay, Justin Kidder says, according to an IGN article, Capcom has said the performance is related to the amount of AI characters in the game. Players are planning an NPC murder spree to boost FPS. <laughs> uh, buy a long PVC pipe from Lowe's or Home Depot. My wife and I use this stretch all the time for our shoulders. Oh, wow. That looks painful FF16 isn't locked at 30 yeah Final Fantasy 16 is not locked at 30 Final Fantasy 16 has a performance mode where it's rock solid 60 in combat and when you leave combat they turn off dynamic resolution and so it drops into like the 30s and 40s it's freaking terrible just leave dynamic resolution on all the time it doesn't make any st- it's, it's so frustrating it's so frustrating. We have it on good authority that they're going to just let the pro fix it. Whatever. No, no, stop being nice. Starfield was a massive failure and disrespectful that it was even released. I mean, I'm not going to go that far, brother. It'd be a big fat lie if they do that. A lot of people are playing on Game Pass for Starfield. Yeah, I don't know if Starfield was like this big, massive commercial success. Like, I think it did well because of the notoriety and the publicity and the top of mind marketing. Like, everybody knew about Starfield, but. We see an orthopedic doctor before doing anything. I watched a video where you do like a you do like a movement test and like he, this guy just says do these stretches and it'll start to feel better and it is so I'm not doing anything that's you know going to make it worse. I'm just doing little stretches that's you know helping. Called rounded shoulder, what in the world's that? Dragon's Dogma succeeded, Jedi Survivor whether people like it or not succeeded, less so on PC. Bloodborne succeeded, granted older example. Arma 3, kind of an outlier I could go on. I would I would hazard a guess I would hazard a guess that Jedi Survivor did not hit the commercial success that they wanted to see. It didn't, it, it, it launched and it did well, it charted, yes. But it's a Star Wars game, right? That's like a guarantee. It wouldn't surprise me at all if that thing fell below projections. I'm not saying that it did. What I'm saying is it would not surprise me if they were like, yeah, Jedi Survivor fell below below projections. Evil West is now available on Game Pass. Evil West is a little bit dated in its structure, but I thought I think it's a fun little game. I was enjoying it when I play. Starfield should be erased from gaming history, and Xbox Bethesda should be forced to apologize. You're just being hyperbolic. I think they can get Starfield into a great place with all their updates. You know what's going to happen, right? They're going to spend a year updating the game, have this big turnaround moment, launch a DLC. It'll be a completely different game. 
And then when it does well and people are praising it and playing it, people are going to go, see Xbox tax. And they're going to ignore the fact that the game has had like a massive transformation. I can see the future. (laughs) I see a future where (laughs) Starfield has been massively improved and has a 2.0 moment. Liken to that as Cyberpunk or No Man's Sky. And when it's praised and does well and gets better review scores on PlayStation, we will hear cries out in the distance on the hillsides like some crazy man who lives in a cave. We're going to hear Xbox tax. I can see it. I can see it happening. Red Dead 2 is the best example of a perfect 30 FPS. Yeah, but it's previous gen. It's previous gen. People can point at previous gen. I, you know, like, sure, great. Red Dead Two was a triumph, and is a, it, Red Dead Two is a beautiful game, but it's it's the previous gen. The same thing will happen with Sea of Thieves on PS5. The reviews will be better than the launch version on Xbox, and they will ignore that it's a totally different game now. Oh, for sure, yeah, for sure. You gotta let Starfield on PS5 go, brother. <laughs> I love. My favorite thing is, just please, I beg you, the guys that make the videos and make fun of me, just keep doing it. Just pile them up. It'll make it even sweeter when it finally happens. It'll make it even sweeter. (laughs) Just keep doing it. I want you to do it. You know? (laughs) Keep pointing to six plus year old games. Yeah, I mean, come on. I don't think Lotus was saying that. I think he's saying that's the last time we've had like a really good 30 FPS game that was massively successful. I think that's what his point was. Right? Okay, so the the Hi-Fi Rush Metacritic score dropped from a 91 to a 90 because it now has 12 reviews. It's probably not going to get any more. Look up round shoulder. A rounded shoulder posture, also known as mom posture. (laughs) It's it's common postural problem in which the resting position of the shoulders lean forward. Patients usually feel slouched and hunched with the situation deteriorating of left untreated. (laughs) <laughs> I go to the doctor, you know, and he's like, it appears here, uh, you have mom posture. <laughs> You're like, oh, doc, <laughs> say it isn't so. <laughs> say it isn't so, doc. Not mom posture. No. <laughs> Is there any hope? Is there any hope for me? <laughs> oh, man. All the first party uh, Sony games have the mode options. Yeah. They're somehow figuring it out. That's weird, isn't it? Isn't it weird how when you build a game for one system, you it's like you get better results. It's just, it's just so, it's just weird, you know? I, I don't know what that means. You know, it, since apparently exclusives are anti-consumer and they were born in the pits of hell by the devil himself, you know, but, you know, I mean, I don't, it's just crazy. It's just crazy that when you build a game for one platform, it's just, it, it's, it runs really well. You get a really good product. And then, I mean, I just yesterday, Horizon Forbidden West ported to PC. And according to Alex from Digital Foundry, it runs incredibly well on weak or low-end hardware. Isn't that crazy how they were able to take like a really good product, a really polished product that was made for one platform, and then they ported it later to PC with a really good porting company like Nixus, and both consumers got a really good product? Isn't that crazy? It's nuts. It's nuts. It's absolutely bizarre. I can't believe it happened. It's the exception to the rule. It's unbelievable they were able to pull this off. 
It's, I just, I don't know. I, I can't believe, I cannot believe they did it. <laughs> How's Ronan running again? The exception to the rule proves the rule. You have one game that's running poorly, and according to the developers, they knew they were going to encounter problems developing that game. They knew. The exception to the rule proves the rule. If you have 10 games that are doing just fine, built for PS5, and then Rise of the Ronin comes out and has trouble, that proves the rule. It proves like, wait, what did these guys do? All of these guys had no problem. There was literally an interview where he was like, yeah, we, we knew we were going to encounter challenges. Team, it's, it's, it was Team Ninja's choice to use that engine, and they knew it was going to be tough. And you can see it in the way that the performance of the game's, you know, metting out. Meeting out. And a single from Lotus Esper. Thank you so much. That rolls it forward. That's Agents of Chaos. Thank you so much. Lotus Esprit. All right, all right, Grandpa Lono, time to take your crazy pills. Rise of the Ronin gameplay is on point. It's getting a lot of bad feedback about performance. It is. What's the maximum review score you believe a game with performance issues deserves? I think if a game has severe um, performance issues, like uh, let's take Jedi Survivor as like a worst case scenario. It was really bad when it came out. The performance issues were very bad. I think you take an entire point, maybe two. I think you take an entire one to two points off. If it's a nine out of 10 game, you drop it to an eight or a seven. And you're like, until they fix these problems, I can't give it a good, I can't give it the score that it deserves. Skatinator gifts a member. Thank you so much, Skatinator. And it goes to Pork Toe. You love to see it. Did Derek get a badge yet? Now, with a game like Rise of the Ronin or Dragon's Dogma, it, it, that's, a, that's a more difficult question to answer because Dragon's Dogma 2, for all intents and purposes, sounds like a game that's going to be nominated for awards, and yet it's poorly optimized, capped at 30 on console, and you need a really, really good rig to get smooth performance on a PC. Like, a really good rig. Like, top 1% in the market is the type of PC that you need. And this is just, I'm just relaying information to you. This is just what people have said. So for me, it's like, I, I'm sorry. It's not capped at 30. It's uncapped 30. Frickin' what? It's a 30 FPS game. It's an uncapped 30, which according to John Linneman creates frame pacing issues. Just brilliant choice. Capcom really great work. Awesome. Um, It's uncapped 30 loan. It, it actually goes above. It like it, it, it 2931 and then that messes with frame pacing and uh, uh, whatever. <clears throat> Lords of the Fallen was a 10 out of 10 for me because of how good the melee combat was. I was really taken in with it though. I I thought Lords of the Fallen was pretty rough around the edges, man, you know. A lot of people blame the un, you know, the Unreal Engine, you know. I don't know. It would be better if it was locked at 30. It's actually worse, says Eugene. It's literally the worst performance it could be. I know many people don't like uh, Luke around here, but he has a ridiculous rig, and it still dropped pretty bad in the cities. It was like on a 7800 and a 4090. It's not that we don't like Luke. It's that he insulted me and my content unprovoked. And I, I watched his content up to that point. I liked his stuff. I, I I liked him. I liked his content, you know? And I would love to have a conversation with him. I feel like, why'd you do that? You know what I mean? I can't promote somebody. I like promoting people. I like being like, yeah, check out that guy's videos. It's really good. He freaking he freaking mocked me and Doc Dark and 30 unprovoked. And then made and then called my content low effort. Like it was oh, it was completely ridiculous. It was so out of character. 
I yeah, that's who did it. This was a while back. I I was watching his content all the time. I was like, I really like this guy. You know, I like his I like his vibe. And then I saw those clips and I was like, what the frick? I was like, we didn't do anything to you. Why would you do that? Uh, I don't I don't know. I don't get why people always have to go that route, you know? You d- disagree with me all you want. Why do we have to stoop to insults? Yeah, I'm a low effort Sony shill. Dragon's Dogma 2 games play is on PC. It looks good, but they're playing on console. It's going to have a lot of problems. Well, well, here's the problem with that, though. It's it's They're both connected, though. You need a really crazy rig to run Dragon's Dogma at a good, at a good, you know, performance. Yeah, they weren't clips. He was doing it live. He was literally in a live stream. He literally watched 30 seconds of a broadcast. And because I uttered the words console war, it was like off to the races. I don't know what it was. It like just triggered something in his brain. He was like, all right. (laughs) It's like, okay. The first YouTuber to simultaneously be low effort and overproduced. Only here at Reforge Gaming do you get overproduced content as well as low effort content. We hit both ends of the spectrum. Keep it here for more low effort, overproduced live shows. Please like, share, and subscribe. I keep trying to time that and I keep messing it up. Go! I'm an amateur fighter and uh, part-time personal uh, I've had to deal with so many shoulder injuries and uh, and no many so many helpful stretches. I'll DM you some tips whenever. Okay, yo William Lewis with another gifted member. Thank you so much. <clears throat> we put a lot of effort into our low effort. That's right. <laughs> That's right. That's right. How rude, Luke Bad. I DM'd him on Twitter because his DMs are open, and I was like, "Hey man, I, I like your I like your content. I like you. Like I was re- I was recommending your content to people, which is why somebody saw you doing this. Like people from my community literally were watching you, and they're like, "What the frick? Like, was he? Oh my gosh, he's he's ripping into Lono." Um, because he he said he sent a tweet about you know he had changed and was trying to be better as a person like he was going through some transformation and stuff and stuff that he did in the past you know that he was he was kind of you know uh, embarrassed about like I guess he plagiarized a video or something I don't know and I was like I can respect that I was like I'd I'd, I'd love to have you uh I'd love to have you uh, I'd love to have a conversation with you and because his DMs are open he probably never saw it he probably never saw it so. Clipped it. I'm putting it on my YouTube as the intro for my content. Overproduced and low effort. There you go. Lono, I'm an old man, full-time fatty. I've had to deal with many shoulder issues. Uh, get the effing clubs. <laughs> Zuby. <laughs> oh my gosh. Who makes fun of someone's stream? I mean, I don't know. Lots of people do that. There's people that's their entire brand. I, You know? The Final Fantasy VII Rebirth patch helped the performance mode uh, look sharper, not as blurry. Yeah, I don't know if they're ever going to do anything with uh, with, with Final Fantasy XVI. I would really like that, but probably not going to happen. You know? What happened with Luke? Okay, Uh, Nothing happened. Oh my gosh. It's not that big of a deal. It isn't. Somebody just said, I know people don't like Luke around here. And it's like, I don't even want that to be a thing. It's not that people here don't like Luke. It's that he took some cheap shots and insulted me in my content and people here didn't appreciate it. That's what happened. It's not that big of a deal. It was months ago. It was months ago, but it just hangs in the air. That's why I never do that. 
I never in all my years of like pulling up content or engaging with what somebody says, I never, I never insult them. I never like attack them. I'm always like, I don't agree with what they're saying. I think that's a bad argument, right? I never go ad hominem because that's exactly what it does. It just creates this shadow and this weird fog of like, oh, that was weird. Why did he say that? Like, ooh, ooh. Is there drama between them? Blah. It's like, I don't care about any of that crap. I don't. I still, I like his, I still like his content. I've watched a few videos here and there. And I feel, I feel bad doing it. I'm like, this, this guy made fun of me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Luke Skywalker. Yeah. Yeah. Luke Skywalker. No, Luke Stevens. Lotus, Lotus Esprit with another gifted member. Thank you so much. Taking us to 129. Thank you so much. I like watching people I disagree with. Well, I, yeah, I don't, I don't have an issue at all watching people I disagree with. Not at all. I disagree with Asmongold on tons of stuff, but I still like watching his, his takes on stuff. You should have him on for a conversation. I actually feel like you guys are similar when it comes to gaming takes. I mean, like I said, I DM'd him and I wasn't going to put it out there in the public on Twitter and be like, Hey man, I'd love to have you on the show because that always invites a bunch of crap. In that very stream where he said what he said, people brought up all the 2020 nonsense to his doorstep, and so he immediately moved on to talk about other things. So, you know, that's what people would do. You don't want to go on that guy's show. That guy got canceled. <laughs> like, it's just, whatever. I'm not interested in in building in building bridges like that are that are potentially one sided. I, you know, if people want to be friends and come on and 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 have fun and conversations i'm all for it but i'm not going to go out there and like knock the da- knock on the door and be like hey can we do a show together you know the beauty of this channel honestly is that people will disrespect you and you never suit to their level you just stop talking about them or any- saying anything at all this is my that's why this is my favorite channel yo lotus esprit thank you so much yeah i mean i just took that policy oh tempting a 20 bomb 130 out of 150 yeah, I just took that policy. Like, obviously, I'm I'm saying Luke's name because that was all it was. It was like a one-time event. Like, he didn't go out and make a bunch of content about me and call me mean names and, and put my face on his thumbnail. So that's why I'm like, yeah, I don't care. Like, it, it's not that big of a deal. It, like I said, it just hangs in the air and it's awkward because because of that reason. But the people that go they stoop low and they attack my character and all that, yeah, I have no interest in talking about them. I don't even I don't even mention them. I don't even check it anymore. You know, I was checking Twitter every once in a while. I've not checked in weeks. I have no idea what these people are saying about me, and I don't care. Do bears on point with the club, says Sneaky Wolf. It's good advice. Thank you, Sneaky Wolf, for the $5 super chat tip. Just don't ever make content that Asmund Gold chooses to put on blast. Oh, I don't think I would ever end up on Asmund Gold's channel because I've 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 I was banned from Twitch, so he can't he can't put me in his content. Even though it's a different brand's name, it's still me. So it would never get through his filtering process because people put stuff in like his Discord and on Reddit and stuff and it would never make it to his show because people would be like, no, 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 don't react to him. You know, Zach probably wouldn't give a frick because he'd be like, go ahead, try to ban me, you know, (laughs) but it would never make it probably never make it to his door. It would never make it to his doorstep, you know. I love his channel for the conversations, the debates, and the fun, engaging arguments. Most live streams have no interest uh, in engaging um, with its chatters and audience. Love the work you do. Thank you, ETP. Yeah, I feel like today has been very... I, I've enjoyed today. I feel like it's been productive. Like, it's been passionate. It's been, you know... I, 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 I get wound up because I really, really do. I think that the 30 FPS discussion... You know, Dragon's Dogma 2 at 30 fps is just drudging up i feel like the argument's coming to an end though i don't think as many people are willing to defend 30 fps anymore i feel like this is we're we're seeing sort of the death rattle of the argument like more and more people are like no i don't want 30 fps dude i don't care i don't like that i doesn't i don't care how cool your game is i don't want to play a 30 fps game especially when it's a next gen only game people are going to expect quality a $70 next gen only game like you left behind the old gen why why are people defending 30 so angry I, I don't want to project I mean the one guy did seem a little you know he did seem a little irritated earlier when he was talking about it they almost go on the offensive you know you're entitled what's the big deal we had this performance in the past and I'm like 
How is that a defense? You know what I mean? Like, how is that a defense? We've had all kind of things in the past. It doesn't mean we want that now. We had really long loading screens in the past. You remember playing PC games in back in the day? You'd go to load it up or you'd go to load into a new area. Man, go make a cup of coffee by the time you're going to get in. So would you defend that? Would you defend that? Oh yeah, this game's got loading screens that last almost an entire minute. It's so immersion breaking. You don't, we had loading screens in the past. Come on. Come on. <laughs> That's not a defense. <laughs> Nobody complains about performance of Helldivers, but I doubt it's perfect. I've had maybe two instances of, like, you can tell, like, the frames are dropping. Um, I probably had two instances of the frames dropping. That's not enough to complain about. That's not enough to draw attention to. Like, what... Now, Helldivers right now, their most recent update, I think, is causing crashes, but that's different. Excuse me, that's different. That's not like endemic performance problems. I need to install Hi-Fi Rush on the other PS5, because the last couple nights, I've just not been wanted, wanting to move my PS5 to the living room, but I've been wanting to play. I just haven't been able to. Helldivers runs great. Yeah, I've had virtually no performance issues with Helldivers, and um are we seriously going to do this again today with the cap card nonsense really okay no it's working oh I have to turn it on to get the audio I was like I didn't see the audio source um, I was going to check on the progress because we are going to be potentially doing this today. We are also going to be co-streaming the future game show later today at um, later today at uh, at 4 p.m. Eastern. I didn't play Helldivers 2 last night because of the crashes. Odin Arrow, why are you bringing that up? Are you in the wrong stream? Nobody here is talking about that. Who are you talking to? That is so out of left field. I thought it was hilarious when Ghost of Tsushima had to have an update to make their loading screens last longer for the tips. Are you sure they did that? I, I remember when they uh, they updated it and I played the director's cut. I remember I went to fast travel and I was like, I went to talk to chat and I went, I like did a double take. I was like, huh? I was like, was there no loading screen? So I fast traveled like three or four more times. There literally was no loading screen. When did they do that, Ryan? I don't think that that's true. Imagine playing Returnal at 30 FPS. It'd be horrendous. The fluidity of performance is critical to the gameplay experience. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Crash's main issue since the patch looks to be with arc weapons. Oh. Looks like we're going to fail this major order. Yeah, I have a stream planned where I'm going to argue that it's rigged in one way, in one direction or another. How does Derek still not have a badge? We have 130 members today, which means... I have gifted 25 members. It's 155 members. This man still doesn't have a badge. I want to be able to control the frame frame rate manually. I want to set it to (laughs) 66.6. You're freaking weird. So excited for Ghost on PC. Ghost loading was always quick. I don't know if they did that. I don't remember that being a thing. I I might have missed it. I don't think we were supposed to complete this order. That Yeah, I'm going to argue that today. I'm going to argue that today in that stream. And then again, at also at 4 o'clock, 4 p.m. Eastern, we are going to be co-streaming the... Um, we will be co-streaming the future game show. We're one of the official co-streamers of that. 
or one of the partners. The point is me. Yo, Darth Nihilus gifts another member. Trying to get Derek in here. Goes to Zephyroth. Takes us to 131. Still tempting a 20 bomb. That'd be a 20 bomb agent of chaos. We'll see if anybody takes the bait. The point of me building a PC so I can play at high frame rates. A 30 FPS game is a no-go. Well, here's the thing, John Hall. Here's the thing. Depending on your rig, really strong rigs are getting 60 FPS. Not consistently. Now, some are, but even even some of the stronger rigs. Darth Nihilus with another one. Comes in with a 5 bomb and tries to get Derek. And takes us to 136. Thanks so much, Darth Nihilus. Ghost of Tsushima loading screens were once so fast, it was a problem. I guess it's true. Huh. Dr. Punch had to extend loading screens to display tips. <laughs> now, is that before the director's cut, though? Because I'm telling you, in the director's cut, I don't. there's no loading screens in the director's cut. This is instantaneous. Nobody who bought a tip of the spear PC wants to play at 60. See, now that's a great point, Zubair. I didn't even consider that. Oh, I'm so glad you brought that up. I I really wonder how this game's going to fare with the review scores on Steam because people with really, really high-end rigs, like, do you think they're going to be okay with 60 to 70 frames most of the time and then dropping in other areas? Aren't they going to be irritated? Like, imagine that you put together a really strong rig last year. Lotus Esprit comes in with a 10 bomb. The guy's been unstoppable today, and he takes us to 146. See if we can snag Derek in the mix, and no. (laughs) We're four away from me owing you guys another five, though. I'm on Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut right now. There are no loading screens. Okay, so that was probably pre-Director's Cut, where if you're going to do a loading screen, at least have it up long enough to read the tip. But the loadings, there there are just no loading screens in the director's cut. Like when you fast travel, you're just like, whoop, you're just there. It's immediate. It's crazy. How many people are willing to vote with their wallets over 30 FPS? They'll keep pushing for fidelity physics ETC at the cost frame rate uh, as comparatively there isn't as many pro 60 FPS people. I'm not buying Dragon's Dogma 2. I was going to play it tomorrow. We decided not to. From here on out, I will not buy a 30 FPS game and play it. I won't do it. Nope. If Hellblade 2 is at 30 FPS, I might showcase it on Game Pass, and then hopefully my PC can play it at 60. But I'm not going to buy a 30 FPS game. No. Heartfelt. Frick your game. Heartfelt. I don't want your game. Why would I play your game? I, I, I have, Like I said, I have a backlog a mile long of games. Last of Us Part 2 Remastered. I, I still need to get back to that. I've been so busy. Helldivers 2 has been a blast. I want to I wanna beat and finish Hi-Fi Rush. I, I am not interested in your 30 FPS game. Get out of here. If Hellblade 2 is 30 FPS on console, alone is ordering a new PC. Yeah, that might be the catalyst to me finally going full and being like, going, going to the local place and being like, I want you to build me the strongest friggin' rig you can. I want you to, th- I want to be able to throw an anvil at this thing. Like, I'll finally do it. I haven't bought a gaming rig in, you know, seven years. Six years. Six years. I think that rig I got in 2018. The It's a Zydax gaming rig that I had built. I haven't had games for three years or so. F your game if it's a 30. That's what I'm saying, Eugene. There's so, there's so many games. Why would I lower my standards for your game? Why? Well, it's a really good game. Okay. I'm not going to enjoy it if I feel like my eyes are straining. Like, uh, I didn't finish the Tears of the Kingdom. You think I'm going to buy your game? I love Zelda. I do. I pushed through and beat Breath of the Wild. And, sorry. Get a Starforge. I'd love to work with Starforge. Um, I don't. We're probably not big enough to get on to get on their radar. We're we're we're, we're just not big enough yet. If you want to start getting, like, PCs and stuff like that, you need to have about a 50k channel. Yo, Keithius with a 5-bomb, takes us to 151. That's Agent of Chaos, and I owe you 5. Thank you so much for doing that. Still no Derek. I'll pay it up. We'll see if we can't get him with my 5. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Come on, come on, come on. Main gear. 
Yeah, I wouldn't mind working with main gear. That's the rig. That's my. That's what my streaming rig is. I got that from. What's that PC store that sometimes you can like go into them physically? I forget the name of it. My, my, Micro Center is that the name of it? They sent me that back when you know in the heydays. It's not about lowering standards. It's about your inability to grasp that people don't care about FPS. Those two statements are not logically connected, Pyramid Scheme. You're you're accusing me of not being able to grasp that most people don't care about FPS. First and foremost, I think more people care about FPS than they used to. I do. Secondly, that has nothing to do with my statement that I won't be buying a 30 FPS game. And I do understand people that don't care about frames per second. I do. I've talked about this before. If it's what you're used to, or it doesn't really bother you, or you play most games at quality mode, or you know maybe your TV is of uh, lower quality, so you're not going to notice it as much, there's all sorts of reasons why somebody might not care about 30 FPS. I, I have the ability to grasp that. I do. I have the ability to grasp that. That has nothing to do with my decision to not buy Dragon's Dogma 2 or be like, I'm, dude, I'm not buying 30 FPS games anymore. I'm not lowering my standards. I'm not. People don't care about performance? Yeah, I don't agree with that. 30 FPS is fine until you experience consistent 60. 60 is fine until you experience consistent 120 plus. If 30 doesn't bother you, don't ever go up to 60. Yeah, I I so I said that to Zubair. I said you ruined yourself. Right? He plays at like such high fidelity on his rig, you know, path tracing and really high frame rates, and then when you go to play a game that's not doing like 120 you know, and doesn't have crazy, amazing path racing, ray tracing turned on. Well, you've ruined yourself. It's going to look bad. Lono is a strong, independent gamer who don't need no game. He's not going to settle. That's right. I feel like you don't even need to be a PC snob to care about 60 plus FPS at this day and age. Yeah, I don't even feel like I'm being a snob. That's what's so weird about it. People don't care about performance is not true, says Henry Heck. I think there is a growing sense of people that do care. I do. And they might not be able to tell you what it is, but like what Eugene is saying, like graphics can't look good without frames. If they've been playing Call of Duty, Fortnite, Grand uh, Grand Theft Auto 5, any of the PlayStation first party games, and they've been playing them at 60, and then they suddenly go play a game at 30, they won't be able to tell you what the problem is. They're going to use words like it's clunky. It feels outdated. Right? Like they're, they're going to use terms like that because they're like something's wrong with this game. It doesn't look right. It doesn't look good. It looks old. It looks clunky. It looks outdated. Those are the types of terms they're going to use. They can't put meat on the bones. They can't tell you exactly what the issue is. Yo, what's good, Kirk? The fact that it's uncapped is the most bizarre to me. Oh, yeah. that That's a whole nother conversation. Why is it uncapped? Did, did they think that was going to, like, win them some PR battleground? Like, it's uncapped. 30. No one cares that your game is uncapped if it's 30 FPS. That doesn't even make any sense. It's the weirdest. I remember when I read the interview, I reread it. I thought I must have misread that. I don't think I've ever read that sentence before in my life. Yeah, our game's uncapped at 30 FPS. What? <laughs> what did you just say? Wow, why? Just cap it. <laughs> Isn't, isn't the purpose of uncapped to allow a game to go above, you know, 60 or whatever to like a let it, you know, let it hit higher thresholds in certain areas. What if they start treating Microsoft and Game Pass like that? I'm not sure. 
However, it's a shame that Capcom didn't find the courage to make a bolder step forward and ditch some annoying, outdated elements. Yeah, like, I noticed a lot of the reviews that were in the 80s and down used words like that. They were just saying, oh, outdated. Feels outdated. It's an outdated game. And it's like, well, what are you talking about? I, they could be referencing performance. I don't know. Uncapped on was great on Hogwarts 144. Sticking it with Timmy B says so much AP in this convo. AP, what you mean? What are you saying? Proud of uncapped 30 FPS. That's what I'm saying, Liquid. I'm like, wait, wait huh? <laughs> 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 Excuse me. The purpose of uncapped is to use VRR. I mean, sh- okay. But then you need to let me cap it. I mean, I'm not buying the game. I have I have no I have no interest in it. I'm not buying it. You will miss a good game just for FPS, who cares? I played Monster Hunter Rise 30 FPS for 300 hours on Switch. That's man, it's good for you, dude. Nope. No thank you. If somebody told me that, dude, this movie's amazing, but the only way you can watch it right now is at low resolution, and it looks like it looks almost like blurry, almost out of focus, I'd be like, I'm, I'm cool. I'm not gonna watch. I've got so many other things I could watch. Why would I watch it? <laughs> Digital Foundry should change their name to Digital Ray Trace Reflections and Shadows. That's all they talk about. I mean, why? That why wouldn't they talk about that? That's some of the new tech. That's some of the new stuff that we're supposed to. You know what I mean? Cat says that's okay, but stop milking content in its name. What are you What are you talking about? What What am I milking content? What game? What name am I milking content from? Are you talking about this? one and only single stream about Dragon's Dogma 2 that I'm doing? Is that what you're referring to? This singular stream that's a larger discussion about 30 FPS and we're using Dragon's Dogma 2 as a catalyst into the discussion because there's a growing sense, especially considering like the GTA 6 conversation, that like 30 FPS games are on the rise. Like, is that what you're referring to? Yes. So I'm milking content from the game. Do you understand what that phrase means? <laughs> like, you're using a term, and I don't think you know what the term means. I'm, I'm doing a single stream about it. This is it. <laughs> this is the end of my coverage of Dragon's Dogma 2. Grand opening, grand closing. You know? I don't like peanuts. Well, you're missing all these great foods with peanuts. Um, no. (laughs) We'll fit right in with the rest of YouTube if we do it five or six times. I'm now Lono. I don't think they're very bright. I don't think we need to insult his intelligence. He wrote a rather intelligent... He he wrote a well-structured sentence. He's got a picture of himself, right? Earlier in the stream, he said, when they say that the game is running on 60 or 70 FPS on PC, it's with everything on Ultra. No, no. That's simply not true. I've seen people with feedback on the game that have said turning down the graphics doesn't really net you much performance because it's a CPU bottleneck. So if you turn down like the textures, it doesn't net you much much of a difference in performance because it's a CPU bottleneck. Yeah, I told you. I don't think that's evidence that they're not an intelligent person. I'm not I'm not punching down. I'm I'm punching back. There's a difference. You want to accuse me of milking content from a game? Put your gloves on, big boy. Like, come on. You want to take a swipe? I'm going to swing back. I'm not I'm not milking the game for content. I'm doing a single stream about it. 
Chris F. with 21 months. Technically, if you just pull one udder, you still milk the cow. Chris, man, just get out of here with your farm knowledge. I don't mind 30, says uh, Kirk, if it's capped to be smoother and the game is built around it like Starfield, whereas this just feels lazy. Well, you can tell that it's not optimized well on PC with how it's running. You can tell. <laughs> you you can tell. It's like... It, it, they didn't optimize it very well. If you have to have an insanely strong rig just to maintain 60, like, come on. Like, come on, what are we talking about here? Th- that's the problem with the discussion, is it's like, it's a great catalyst to talk about 30 FPS, but if you really want to talk about Dragon's Dogma 2, like, Dragon's Dogma 2 is, it's not optimized well. That's the problem. We're not going back to 30 FPS. We're not regressing. There's not a trend. It's another game that made uh, decisions that netted, a, I think, a, a, a negative. This man has the platinum in every farm sim this side of the Mississippi, right? <laughs> he knows all about milking. <laughs> did anybody make a meet the parents joke? I, did anybody? Did you cover Steam Deck? 10 FPS? <laughs> 10 <laughs> a, a 10 uh, what do you give uh, what do you give Dragon's Dogma 2 on the Steam Deck a 10 a 10 out of 10 no literally 10 frames 10 frames a second that's what it gives <laughs> a single gift that comes in from Lotus Esprit this man cannot be stopped today still gifted members <laughs> End frames, bro. What in the heck is going on? Oh. Nope, not a single milking the cat joke. Disappointing. That's pretty bad. Yeah. Maybe we're just too far from maybe we're just too far from the movie, you know? It's just it's we're too far away from it. You gotta be a sick son of a <laughs> to play Dragon's Dogma 2 on the Steam Deck. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Yeah. What kind of a sadistic monster would do such a thing? Uh, I said it. Scroll up. Oh, Tommy, did you say it? You can milk anything. Okay, okay. Tommy said it. Tommy got the Tommy got the meet the parents joke in. Who is this guy? He's. We both have a forty ninety, and it means nothing. Who gives an F? Thirty isn't smoother. Enjoy thirty FPS for life. What the heck is this guy's problem? He says, the people with the actual god rigs just love gaming. It's never them that talk crap like this little kid. (laughs) Uh. Creatures adding me in the Discord for something that I tweeted hours ago. Come on, man. No chat. IGN Performance Review said the Steam Deck is hitting 7 to 15 FPS. He's not crossing any lines. He's just silly. Seems like he's upset. <laughs> he's having a bad day. He's having a bad day. His mom's using the computer right now for Pinterest and he can't play. So it's, it's not, it's not the day, you know, the day didn't start. The day didn't start the way that he wanted it to. <laughs> it's uncapped 15 frames a second, guys. Just, you know, I don't read what you tweet. I'm normal. So you have control of the accounts, but you're not out here checking what I'm doing. That's not true. You know? Mm-mm-mm-mm. 
flying charger isn't real he can't hurt you yeah I've seen footage of the flying charger terrifying the, uh, Kirk says guys the game will be good on console eventually this isn't an indictment from Lono against the game's premise and mechanics you missed my member message oh my gosh sorry Mr. Frugal hang on a single gifted comes in from JC and takes us to 153 give me a moment to get that Mr. Frugal um 27 months Mr. Frugal says you do know what the Xbox PC app has access to Game Pass Ultimate will you play Hellblade and Diablo 4 on PC Game Pass also uh, is Diablo 4 tomorrow's topic um I don't know if I'll if I'll I would probably buy Hellblade 2 on Steam I wouldn't want to go through that freaking garbage app um I'd rather pay for a game than use the Xbox PC app it's it's horrible second uh, Diablo 4 as a topic to tomorrow no no I have very little interest in that game they fell flat on their face and it's rare for me to go back to a game and be like let's see what's going on with Diablo no I'm good and I'd rather play Rise of the Ronin tomorrow and show that off and then tomorrow night I'm going to play Princess Peach uh, with my wife I'd rather play games tomorrow than cover Diablo 4 I'm trying to pop my ankle. Juice Man with a $5 Super Chat tip says, I'm going to buy it as a fan of the original since the 360 era. I've been waiting for forever. The FOMO is real. 30 to 60 is not that serious for single player games. I'm glad that you think that. It means you get to enjoy more games than me. You know? I feel like people are being extremely defensive because they like the game, and that's totally fine. This is just a preference thing. No FW tomorrow? No FW? What the heck is FW? The public test looks good. I mean, Frugal, I'll be honest with you. Um, oh, Forbidden West. Um, you know, I guess since we're not doing Dragon's Dogma 2, we could we could run Forbidden West tomorrow and see how it runs on my rig. That might be kind of fun. You know? That might be kind of fun. Alex from Digital Foundry seemed to think that it ran really well on lower-end hardware. And my 20... 80 Ti is now kind of in that hemisphere, especially for a game like Forbidden West. That game's pretty demanding. Uh, English with 30 months in a VIP. I'd play 30 FPS if I could turn it to two times speed. I used I used it. It's not anywhere near as bad. The PC Xbox app is a whole lot better since it started using it in 2019. I would still just rather support the devs and buy the game on Steam. Like, if I have to retreat to PC, I, you know, I would rather buy the game than play it on Game Pass. The D4 devs took itemization from last epoch, simplified it a bit, and they're trying to implement it. It's a good change. Let me, uh, let me go ahead and do something here. Uh, while I'm doing this... If you guys could please smash the like button. We had such a huge turnout today. We we peaked around 700 viewers. So let's try to get 400 likes on the video. Um, if you guys hit that like button, it helps the video perform better. We are going to switch chat to a members only thing just briefly here at the end. This is sort of a gaming AMA. You can ask me anything about gaming for members only. This is a great time to gift members, pull people in to the members only conversation and it gives you guys an opportunity to sort of break away from the topic and ask me about other things uh and then in probably about 10 minutes or so we're gonna go over uh and check on the old major order in Helldivers 2 I think it's rigged uh we might even play for a little bit and then we'll go hang out with members um and uh I'll do an on all members members only hangout today for all of the new people getting gifted members uh we don't have a need for the writer's room today um 
we don't have a need for the writer's room because uh, so creatures creatures off the hook for the day because we're just doing gameplay tomorrow you missed my apology um for the longest time i was calling you a propaganda perpetuating phony calling for you to report to the nearest democracy officer but last night my eyes have been opened i saw them flying i told you guys I think they're rebranding too to the Ministry of Intelligence. I don't know if they're going. Um, I don't know if they're they're going to be referred to as Ministry of Truth. You gonna do an I told you so stream on the Ministry of Lies? I probably should just do that video over there on the Hell Divers Two Updates channel. That channel is crushing it, dude. <clears throat> that channel's crushing it. Its videos and its shorts are doing so well. It's really exciting to see. Really exciting to see. Um, so we'll probably do a video over there about it. And we might finally pull the trigger on doing something with the Helldivers Liberty Union. You know? It's time, it's time for us to, to take back, to take back the truth, you know, and to fight back. Because the Ministry of Intelligence cannot be trusted. They're liars, you know? It's time. We might end up putting that over there. Thank you to everybody who has pushed subscribe today. Thank you for all of the gifted members. What an incredible day. A huge, huge thank you to Lotus Esprit for gifting huge, huge numbers today. But also single gifteds from JC and five bombs from Keithius and Darth Nihilus and Skatenator with a single gifted and Bro Sexy with a single gifted and Darius Ward contributed. DK Beggar contributed. Uh, thank you guys so, so much for that. Appreciate that very, very much. Um, all the super chats as well just such a stellar day for the channel Um, you're sad you bought Ronin already yeah I'll be playing Ronin tomorrow speaking of Helldivers Matt Piscatella reporting Helldivers 2 was the number one selling game for Playstation, Steam, and Xbox uh, for February. And Final Fantasy VII Rebirth number two. This is above Call of Duty. Skull and Bones miraculously in the number four spot. Suicide Squad in the number seven spot. So that's actually not bad. Suicide Squad, you know, not completely dead in the water if it was in the number three spot for January and then the number seven spot for February. That's not terrible at all. Helldivers being in the number one spot for the top selling game in February across all platforms and then Final Fantasy 7 for both Helldivers 2 and Final Fantasy 7 to be above Call of Duty holy moly I mean PlayStation's having PlayStation's having such a strong year <clears throat> remember when people said that Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth was, wasn't selling well it's, it's in the number 2 spot for February but okay <laughs> it's so funny it's just every time it's like it's like <laughs> this shaky false narrative you know and they stack all their cards up and then the sales charts like this big wrecking ball just and they're like I'm gonna do it again this month <laughs> just gotta be so tiring to just lie all of the time (laughs) with no first party right like like, they'll try to act like that's a problem too well they're not first party (laughs) (laughs) I I love it I drink it up dude it's 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 like it's like creamer in my coffee, you know? Mm, yeah. Stupid people being shown to be stupid. Mm. Oh, it's tasty. <laughs> <laughs> I really feel like they had to make room for second and third party releases. I also think there's a very high likelihood that first party is is working on ps5 pro optimization it makes perfectly good sense of the timing like when the dev kits hit in september we found out around that exact same time we found out about around that exact same time that they internally delayed a bunch of first party games like come on come on we know what's going on (laughs) 
we we know what's going on. Weapons experimentation, the Eagle 500K stratagem is available to all hell divers. Huh. Who said the twin pack was throwing physical sales off? Yeah, the Final Fantasy 7 remake and uh, I'm sorry, the Final Fantasy 7 remake and rebirth twin pack is in the number 8 spot. It's in the top 10 spot for the best-selling games of February. Which, again, would make sense as to why the physical sales looked like they weren't so great for Rebirth. Because people were buying the bundle. The bundle's in the number 8 spot last month. Again, I, I'm telling you, stop listening. Stop listening to people who are so quick to run with a stat or a presumption and just run with some narrative. Like you, it, Every single time, the train of truth comes to the station and we're like yep yeah, they're full of it <laughs> oh i'm so surprised you know oh it's so surprising good night i hope you enjoy ronin oh i think the gameplay looks fantastic in ronin like the 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 the, the parrying and the combat i think it all looks awesome but you know I also, I also think they're getting taken to task for performance, which isn't surprising. Like I told you guys from that very first, that very first stream, I was like, good golly, that looks rough, you know, and it is, it's getting, it's getting criticized for rough performance. Like, listen, we've been doing this for too long for anybody to be fooled anymore. Like. Why are you getting fooled by... You know what I'm saying? We've been doing this for such a long time. Watch a trailer. Yo, Dave coming in as a VIP. I count that as two members. That takes us to 155. That's a 20 bomb away from the next milestone to 175. If anybody's going to drop that bomb, you got about five minutes to do so. And uh, we're going to be getting out of here. We're going to be going and... and uh, Checking on this major order, and it's to, oh, this is just going to be so perfect. It's going to be so perfect. I love when things like this line up for streams. That the first plan is going to be sitting at 99%. We're going to be able to stream it walking to 100%. We're going to see what happens if anything with the order changes. Will you skip Hellblade if it has similar performance issues? I mean, I don't want to. Like, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to skip it. I'll play it on PC if I have to. My love for Hellblade will just drive me to PC. And here's the thing you have to understand. I, I If Dragon's Dogma was running really, really well and it was really well optimized, I probably would have bought it on PC and played it tomorrow. I probably would have. But it's so poorly optimized, I'm not going to waste my time. You're going to run like garbage. And a five bomb comes in from Parasito. He says, come on, boys. Many hands make light work. And takes us to 160. Thank you so much, Parasito. And thank you, Dave, for doing a VIP, man. I appreciate that very, very much. Okay. You've had an account for a long time, too, Dave. Where are you from? Just brand new, jumping in with the VIP. That's crazy. <clears throat> Guys, you got a few. You got a few minutes before we're gonna shift gears to this uh, this Helldivers coverage. Hellblade will run fine. All 19 minutes of its cinematic greatness. I I really do not appreciate the slander of Hellblade from my my own producer. You know, I really don't appreciate it. Sometimes I can't tell when Lono's being uh, sarcastic. We are currently at 2388 on the member count. So if we hit the next milestone, we will basically be at 2400. You guys will have gotten us exactly 100 away. 
from the goal. Legend status with 22 months and a VIP, man. Thank you so much, Legend, for renewing that membership. I appreciate you so, so much. <laughs> Nobody will give Eugene flowers. Connection error. Failed to join host. Oh, are you trying to join me, Paris? Did they push out an update? Do I need to go get an update? Is that why you might not be able to join me? My top five games or franchises in the past five years. Top five games or franchises in the last five years. Ghost of Tsushima, Returnal. Um, I mean, I played Hellblade in the last five years, I think, for like the first time. I can't remember the first time I played it. I would probably try to throw Hellblade in there. Ori, the Ori games, Ori and the Will of the Wisps, Ori and the Blind Forest, I would throw in there. Um, and then probably God of War. I'd throw in Sekiro too. I don't know when Sekiro released though, but Sekiro is like one of my all-time favorite games and I played it in the last five uh, years. It came out 2019. So yeah, that fits in. That fits in. That time frame. Yeah. Definitely Returnal, Sekiro, Ghost of Tsushima, they would all be on there. Um, Just wonderful games. Um... Can I join you? Yeah, if you guys want to join me, that's totally fine. They locked it again at 99%. Alright, we need to get we need to get moving. You guys can keep gifting members in the new stream. That's totally fine. We need to get moving because they just locked it at 99%, which means something might be going to be happening in the game. Um... Okay... Mm-hmm. All right. All right. I'm going to post a link in chat. I'm going to post a link in chat. Hang on. I got to get the. There we go. What's happening? We're switching to a new stream. I'm going to argue that the major order is rigged. I don't think we can complete it. I hope they turn off friendly fire. Oh, if they never turn off friendly fire. They're never going to turn off friendly fire. They're encouraging us to use ultra low latency now. I wonder if they've made it any better. Because we run low latency in the uh, in the member streams. So, All right, guys. Remember, when we go over to this new stream, please go crazy on the like button when we get over there. Uh, go crazy on the like button right now before we leave. We should easily have 400 likes on this video. We only need 25 more. And then you can keep gifting members uh, when we get over here. We're 15 away from the next milestone. All right. Thanks so much for checking out this video. We are going to be talking today about the Helldivers 2 Major Order is rigged. I do not think we are going to be able to complete it. We will be getting 4E Prime any second. You will notice every time we've hit 99%, it freezes. So we're going to have to wait for this one to roll over. We might even have to reboot the game to get a true update on the Major Order. Now, I'm going to give you where we stand, what we need, and I'm going to tell you what I think will happen. I've got some theories. Now, I'm going to end the previous stream where we talked about Dragon's Dogma being at 30 FPS. I'm going to bring people over with a redirect. And thank you guys so, so much for such a huge, huge stream. So many new members. You'll notice 